This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere, on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Support this podcast and get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Rooster Teeth. Audible.com slash Rooster Teeth. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell was that? Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. All right, can anybody identify who's on the like, screen right I was like, that's not us. I can. I, I submitted that. Oh. Well, you submitted for what? So for, for a potential topic to talk about tonight. Well, do you want to talk about it right now? Videos of the year, because we're talking about No, 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 not, not for okay. video of the year. That was Greg Benson of Mediocre Films. Yes. And who that is? was the cell phone in a airport prank, right? Do you want to show it since we obviously led the podcast with that? Do you want to well, show that? Yeah, prank? well, we can talk about it first. So it's a it's a prank in which this guy goes around. I'm with, Gus Sorolla. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm Gus. <laughs> I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. I'm Bernie. And I'm Gus. Uh, so this guy <laughs> finds people talking on cell phones in public places, in this case in the airport, and then sits down next to them, pretends he's on the phone, and pretends to have the other end of the conversation that that person's having. Genius. It's like a two runny sketch. And uh, so then he just does it, I guess, to see what kinds of reactions he gets out of people. And I think we have it queued up if we want to show a little bit of it. Yeah. So then, like, people move away, and he's like, "Oh, hold on, the reception's not very good me. here." Yeah, let me. I'm gonna move over here. Oh yeah, reception's much better. <laughs> uh, and that's after like five minutes of already doing it to that guy. Yeah, and it. it I don't know. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> like this woman's like, "What do you want for dinner?" He's like, "I don't know, a burger, maybe pizza." <laughs> She's like, and it, every, but everybody has the same reaction. They're like, "Are you talking to me?" He's like, "No, no, no, I'm on the phone." They're like, "Oh, okay, just." Well, we're having like the same conversation. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking to talking to my friend. My favorite part is when they're like, "All right, love you," and he's like, "All right, love you too." Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I've seen uh, I've seen two other really great uh, cell phone prank video concepts, and one was it reminded me a little bit of that one in that they would be in a grocery store in an aisle with somebody, and like the person would be shopping, and they'd be on the phone going, "Now she's looking at Cheerios." Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, she's looking at me now. <laughs> like, are you, are you like they're describing in detail what somebody's doing right there? Pe- freaks people the fuck out. Yeah, like, no kidding. Who are you talking to? Why are you telling them what I'm doing? And they get really upset about it. But the other guy was really brilliant. This was a brilliant idea. He got a Bluetooth headset and he put it on, and he'd be in the streets of New York and he'd walk up to the most gorgeous wom- women and he'd go, he go, I just want to say, I think you're absolutely gorgeous. I'd love to take you out sometime. And I just, I, what, what do you say? And they go. I have a boyfriend. He goes, no, I'm on Bluetooth. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. They all apologize. But it was amazing because it like took away any kind of fear this guy had of like yeah. approaching the most beautiful women. Like he would always say. And, like, and then if they say yes, you're like, okay, great. Let's go. Did. And he totally did. He got numbers from girls that way. And Genius. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Was he a good looking guy? Uh, like on a scale of what? One on, a, on a scale yeah, of Gus sure, to Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did he, he have was, Blaine-ish overtones? He was hot as shit. That actually happened to me in the tech office the other day where – Adam sits behind me. I can't see what he's doing. And I heard him talking. And Both I was like, Adams. Adam uh, Baird was talking. Okay. Yeah, big Adam. <laughs> Both Adams. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the control room laughed. Um, and he was talking, and I was answering him. And after like two seconds, he goes, uh, I'm on the phone with my wife. And I'm like, I was wondering why you were saying, what do you want for dinner? And stuff like that. And she's like <laughs> on the phone with Megan the whole time. And I just crawled out of the office and... I don't know. Like a good thirty to forty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there was like multiple exchanges back and forth. Yeah. How do you guys feel about prank <laughs> prank videos in general? Um, I don't like mean spirited ones. Yeah. Uh, but some that are like funny and tongue in cheek, I'm okay with. I still really like the ones of the the guys in that store just trashing the place. I like, hate those. <laughs> what do you I mean? The, hate the, those the, the gallon? Yeah. What the gallon <laughs> challenge? Is that what they call it? It's so absurd. I love that. That's insane. I, love the I fucking hate those videos. I saw one of those. It's where the guys take a gallon of milk and then they flop like <laughs> hardcore, just like pratfall and smash the gallon of milk on the supermarket floor. And it's like, it really scares the shit out of people. <laughs> it's like, there's milk all over the they floor. Get, they really get creative with it, though. With and it's like some like... kid that's lying on the floor. It looks like he's hurt or he like smashing in his head or something. And they try to help him up and he's like flopping around and sliding and all that <laughs> stuff. It's pretty funny. I, I hate those too. I can't watch them. All that wasted milk. See, if they were milk bags, we wouldn't have this problem. It's true. 
the bag is much more resilient Just to saying. bursting than the than the gallon. So the other. But night, you will like. There's one word, Gus, not to derail you, but there's one where a dude does it and fucking like breaks his jaw. Oh, I have seen that one. I and do I like thought, that one. Gus would love yeah. that because it's <laughs> That's instant karma. Instant. It's way too over the top punishment for that though. That the kid breaks. No, he's getting jaw. punished for all the videos he watched and everyone else. Like it all gets metered out to that guy. So how do you break his jaw? He like uh, it's when he fell right. He had a case. Yeah. And I think he, or like he, like he busts the milk and then slips on it and smacks his jaw. I'll try to find the video and show it to you. <laughs> Sucker. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's absolutely warranted. Um, so the other night oh. I had, it was, it was the night before last night. I had a really, really strange dream, and uh, it was so strange that I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it here. Really? So, this is yeah. like the dream analysis part of the podcast. So I had a dream that I was walking my little dog Oswald. They're both little. My littler dog. <laughs> And it was the morning, and I had, like, my hoodie on, and, like, I had just gotten out of bed, and I was walking him in the front yard, and I look, and my next-door neighbor is Gray. <laughs> and I'm like, that's weird. How long does Gray live next door to me? <laughs> and then Miles and Aaron are talking to him. I'm like, what's everyone doing over here, like, in my neighborhood? They're like, oh, hey. I'm like, Gray, how long have you lived here? He's like, I've lived here for, like, two years. I'm like, how have I not fucking known this? <laughs> so then I keep walking my dog down the street, and then my next neighbor over is Mac Brown. What? Mac Brown is the UT football yeah. coach. I guess it was like <laughs> the night he had announced his resignation. So maybe I'd been thinking about him. And Mac Brown had like this big like Labrador dog. And like the Labrador comes out and he starts like licking my dog. And I look down and my dog is a candy cane. <laughs> 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 but in my head, it's fine. That's my dog. You know, and I'm like, oh my god, is it that still dog. on like a leash and everything. Yeah, it's on the candy cane's on a leash. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, like the big Labrador Nobody has the candy cane in its mouth, and I'm like, control your dog, it's eating my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mac Brown calls his dog away, but then like a piece of the bottom of the candy cane falls off. No. I'm like, look at that, look what my dog's my dog's fucked up. So wait, you- <laughs> and then Mac, Mac Brown's like, it's okay, it's okay, I can fix this. He goes into his house and he gets like this aerosol spray can <laughs> and he starts spraying the candy cane like to fuse the pieces back together except like the little rounded part falls off and I start freaking out like my dog's face <laughs> <laughs> like that's the face to me like my dog's face just fell off. I like how you're still off. referring to it as your <laughs> dog. dog the candy cane and, and then Mac Brown just turns around and goes back into his house. I'm like my dog's face fell off. What am I going to do? <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like what the fuck was that? <laughs> So was the dog, were you, did you know that it changed and you were like, oh, the equivalent of the dog's face has come off? Or did you actually think that it was your dog in that form? It was my dog in that form, I guess. Like, <laughs> it wasn't candy. gross or anything. It was just like a piece of candy cane broke off. That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> it was like really freaky. I was so upset <laughs> that I woke up and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Dreams are weird like that, though. When you have a dream and it's like, it completely changes. Like, people in it change. Yeah. Or you change to somebody else. And... The setting changes and your brain's like, yeah, that's fine. It's good. Do What's you remember wrong with it? the one I told you about like last week? No. I had a really fucked up dream and it makes no sense whatsoever. It was Meg Turney and she was visiting our office. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, she was trying to convince all of us to build a statue for Satan. That sounds <laughs> believable. Sounds about right. Yeah. And like, I was the only one who was like, why are we doing this? I don't get it, guys. And everyone's like, Just shut listen. up, Barbara. So did we build the so, stage, the, the, the stage did. statue? So basically, okay, you great. think all of us are evil at the office, and you're the only good person. <laughs> Probably. That's what I gather from that. I'm what I gather from my dream is I want to eat my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara hates redheads. She thinks that redheads are evil. No, That's I what I'm getting redheads. from that. So I want to be a redhead. Evil but productive. My yes. dream yes. the other night, this is the only dream I remember from the last week. In my dream, I had a wet dream. And I was like, God, i got to change my sheets. But I fell asleep on it, and I was like, I'll change the sheets in the morning. And when I woke up, it was all blood. And there were, like, bloody handprints all over my mattress. Wait. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, wait, that was minute, so wait he was asleep in his dream. Wait, you were asleep. You woke up from a wet dream to being covered in blood? In his dream. <laughs> no, that was all no, a dream. No, the whole thing was a dream. I what? get it. I get it. But your brain is putting these two things together. You have- yeah, I was in my dream, in my, my mind, my dream mind. In my dream, I was like, is this Third my... Gavin. It, it, <laughs> whose blood is this? Did someone come and crawl with bloody hands on my, like, cummy mattress? <laughs> so, what was... Okay, so first Gavin is having a dream. That what do you mean second, first Gavin? The for original Gavin you. is having... <laughs> original Gavin, Gavin Prime, <laughs> is having a dream about second Gavin in ha- a bloody a bed. No, 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 no. He's, second Gavin's having a wet dream. Yeah. Wet dream about being third Gavin is in a bloody bed? No, second Gavin has a dream about 
uh, having a wet dream, <laughs> then wakes up. That's second Gavin. That, okay, so yeah, third so Gavin. So original Gavin is having a dream about second Gavin in a bloody bed who's having a, a dream about... Dream. Thir- third Gavin is Coming having the best time, basically. In a bloody bed. No. No, third no, no. Gavin's just jizzing. Third second Gavin is Gavin's in the in mind of second Gavin. But wouldn't, wouldn't third Aww. Gavin have a wet dream and he wakes up from the wet dream? He's had the wet dream. So he's, he's both had the wet dream and he's in a bloody bed. The person in the dream doesn't have a wet dream, except for this dream. But usually... <laughs> You're saying the word wet dream. what we're talking about at this point. You're saying the word wet dream and Gavin so many times. I feel like everybody watching is going to have a wet dream about Gavin tonight. I feel like our if podcast is so on Tumblr. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we should insert a subliminal frame every so often. Hey, hey Gavin. So I'm not I totally not going to show this to the audience, but I'm going to show it to you. This is the guy... Who breaks his jaw? Oh, oh, yeah. oh my god That was awful He deserved that <laughs> So yeah he fell He slipped and hit his head It's like that his job pretty fucking back. hard. Yeah The worst thing you can ever see When somebody falls Is this thing Bang And their head like flops back Yeah the skull yeah. bounce Yeah it's horrible And you know It's just horror for that person Awful What's Good. the worst you've ever Hurt yourself The worst I ever hurt myself Was at that paintball game We went to years ago uh, back in 04 or 05. Yeah. Gus and I went to a 36 hour long paintball game. It went and it went all day and all night. So in the middle of the night, you're out in the woods in the dark with paintball guns, like shooting at people. But you're mm-hmm. done after like two hours. No, it was fun. You, we had a what, good time. You mean like you get shot? If you get shot, no, I mean you, you just be out. done with. Oh it, no, absolutely like, not. You're really? out there a lot. Oh yeah, there were like, tanks. The balance, pumping. There were tanks. We found some uh, images, some photos you took of that the other day. Where did you find those? They were up under the printer by my desk. That's what? so weird. That's um, so weird. But this yeah, was actually, it was actually based on StarCraft. That was the rules of this. So there were actually three armies fighting against each other. The that best was like when the block. Protoss carrier showed up and it was like a bunch of dudes. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't shoot them while they were all hooked up to it because that meant they were in the air. It's all simulated warfare stuff. Uh, but in, in, when we were playing that paintball game, uh, it's going to sound so stupid. I dove for cover. And, uh, Can't behind, imagine you diving for cover. And when I, as I was diving, I hit my shoulder on the ground and I heard like a snap, snap, snap. Uh, and I guess I had torn the tendons in my shoulder, and I couldn't move my right arm for like. Oh, I thought it was like just some month black chick behind you. That was your worst injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's my black chick joke. Right. I think I know what yours is. Uh, the balls. Uh, it would it would either be the time I fell on the back of my head, or I got reversed into by a car once. That really hurt. What? Where, like where it hit? You? Like you were walking? Yeah, I was in the the car park of Woolworths, which is yeah, you know, which still know. exists still, in they, the UK. Yeah, we, it does exist in the UK. What's a Woolworths? It's a store. It's a department store. Here, we had in the US. Yeah, they, Woolworths. Can't I know you had them, but we, they closed down in the UK. Anyway, yeah. I, was, I think they're all done here too. It's like yeah. old school, like turn of the century department store. Some woman, I guess, just slipped in on reverse. And you know that like sound a car makes when it's going in the, in, like, the top like of the gear? It sounds like a wind-up toy. Yeah, it's like, eh? Yeah. And I was like, well, that's not going to be good. And it just hit me from the side and uh, like ripped all my jeans off. And I wow. ended up like really, it must have been going like, Maybe 15, 20 miles an hour. It ripped it, your jeans off? But it absolutely, it tore them. Because like, oh. it was like a dust. It, was, it wasn't really a very nice fall. But uh, that really hurt, yeah. I was all scraped uh, on one side. I didn't know that happened. Boy, this is weird. Yeah. Woolworth, first store opened in 1879. And it went defunct in 1997. It turned into a different store. What? And they changed its name from Woolworth to Foot Locker. What's That's what Foot Locker is. Foot Locker predates that, though. Foot Locker did not start in 1997. There were Foot Lockers in the world. And it says in 2001. In 2001, the company focused exclusively yeah. on the sporting goods market, changing its name to the present Foot Locker Incorporated. Foot Locker existed before that. Shut the fuck up, Gus. This is Wikipedia. <laughs> Foot, Foot Locker was founded in 1974. Wikipedia, get your fucking shit together. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, maybe it was a division of, of uh, Woolworth. Is it spelled like Foot Locker? It's called the Successor Corporation... To the F.W. Woolworth Corporation. Mm-hmm. Woolworth is now Foot Locker. That's all I'm saying. Maybe Foot Locker bought them? Maybe Foot Locker was a division of Woolworth. It was around <coughs> later than that in the UK, though. What was? Woolworths. Later than 1997? Yeah. Nah. Because mm-hmm. you got all your jeans torn off when? Yeah, how old were you when that happened? Maybe it must have been. I was probably 15. Mm. Okay, then yeah, that was probably like 2004, 2003. What's your worst injury? Um, I don't have very many, but when I played basketball, I would uh, break my fingers a lot because ah. um, I was always a guard, so I would always get rebounds and stuff, and balls would tend to hit your fingers dead on. It's horrible. Yeah. I think the worst one was probably my uh, ring finger. It just kind of bent the 
other the wrong way. way. Yeah. The way it's not supposed to bend. Gross. The company where we worked, and actually for a very, very short time at Rooster Teeth, uh, but the company where we worked uh, prior to this, uh, we, there was a basketball goal in the parking lot. We played basketball sometimes on break or after work. And we actually had a basketball goal. Here here. For a while. Yeah, for a very short time we had one at Rooster Teeth, but then the wind blew over. And cracked the backboard, and, and then it, it was just a hoop, and that was that, impossible. That was, and it. then you started Nobody hiring cared. more and more people, and the parking lot got exactly full, full. But I remember our buddy Nick that worked at yeah. the the call center. Um, I had a ball one time like this, and he slapped my thumb while I was holding the ball, like trying to knock it loose, and he just hit it in the right way. Where <gasps> I like, I like jammed this joint that you don't even know is a joint. It's like the <laughs> bottom of your thumb. That thing hurt me for like nine months. And I think the worst pain I've ever been in my life was it always hurt to like, like move it or bend it. And it, it's like crippling to have your thumb hurt. And at one time I was reaching into the laundry machine to get out my laundry to put it in the dryer. And I, you know that big <laughs> spindle that comes up the middle? Mm -hmm. I caught my thumb in that and bent Ugh. it back. Uh, it hurt so bad it like brought me to my knees uh, in the, my, my parents' your thumbs, laundry room. Man, it's what separates us from animals. Yeah. You need that. Yeah. Uh, Think about it. The, any of those bigger injuries I got were bad at the time. But the longest... The injury I suffered the most pain from over the longest amount of time was just slipping on ice where I was just running and sliding around on ice. And I twisted my ankle one way, like went onto the, my ankle as I fell the other way. So I like, it kept bending and then my, my leg kind of just sprung out like this. I was like, oh, and it didn't hurt too badly. I was like, God, that sucked. But it but honestly, it, lingers. it hurt for about 18 months. Yeah. I couldn't sit cross-legged anymore. I'd be like, oh, and it went away. But I don't know what I did. I must have actually. Couldn't sit cross-legged. How did you manage? A lot. <laughs> sit on the floor on your laptop. I Maybe that. that's why every time you sit still now, your legs bounce continually <laughs> every every time you're sitting. The same I feel position. like we have a lot of people who work here who do that. God, there I are certain people. I couldn't sit like Gavin. It's like there are certain people like, I will not sit next to, like at lunch, at lunch or in public, because they will not stop fucking moving. Let's their throw leg. some names out. Who are we talking? That always makes me sad. Gavin, him. <laughs> uh, Gilby, Gilby, he, he does, he's a leg shaker. One of these. What's he up he didn't that? believe me. I had to take video of him once. Like secretly of his leg moving. I was like, look, this is you. Did you do it in slow-mo? No, I didn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> All of my brothers do that at home. Yeah. And my dad. Woolworth went defunct in the UK in 2009. Yeah. Oh, really recent. 18, uh, excuse me, 819 locations. Man, went out of business. That sucks. Didn't yeah. become Foot Locker though. Didn't become Foot Locker. It became... The uh, Shop Direct Group. Bought World Wars. This is like the most boring conversation ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad we. This is absolutely uh, the most boring thing that. we've ever talked about. <laughs> um, so I, I was I saw an article earlier today. I think it was on Kotaku talking about this new live streaming phenomenon that's going on in South Korea, where you know I guess a lot of people like to like live stream video games and shit like that. But I guess the big thing over there right now is people live streaming while they eat and they prepare like giant spreads of food. And they'll just sit there for a couple of hours and eat all of it. Um, so, like, there's this one woman, I guess, who's, like, really well known for it. And in a night, she'll eat, like, the, the, look at his legs are going crazy. Uh, and in a night, this one woman will eat her. She'll eat, like, 30 eggs. And, like, all of that food she'll eat by herself. Are people, like, sexually into this? <laughs> so it's a fetish thing. Can I tell you something? I'm absolutely fascinated by this. I want go back to the go back to the other lady. It's, 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 it's not awesome. a fetish thing. It's not like they, they She's get... She's so awesome. What do you mean? This is a sexual thing. They just like sit there and talk and describe the food that they're eating. It's got to be. I like, love the dog in her lap. <laughs> Look. Kind of looks like Oswald. You yeah. can absolutely say that this doesn't make any sense, but how many of the most popular YouTube channels are just someone looking into a camera going, hey guys, so today I went to the store and they didn't have any milk and I was like really bummed out. Anyway, let me know what you think about no milk in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the majority it's just a connection it. thing that people like. And in a lot of cultures, you know, food's the way that people primarily connect yeah, with Yeah, and here another. they'll like prepare some of the food and eat it and describe it and just like talk about food for an hour or Who's two. Who's watching it? Is it mostly Americans? No, it's it's all Koreans. Every or else, oh. Yeah, South Koreans, obviously. North Koreans don't have food or internet. <laughs> How wow. many? Don't worry, they can't hear it. They're not going to fucking complain. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is, is that you could do this. You could set out a little big trough of food and start eating it, and you would get so many views. You could do it. And I guess, like, the website where this is popular, they have, like, uh, microtransactions, so people can, like, send them money. <laughs> to buy more food? To buy more food. Yeah, like that one woman, I guess, like, the, the article interviewed her. All right, stop. Uh, she said she spends between three <laughs> and $5,000 a month just on food for that streaming. Wow. Stop. Explain to me what Epic Meal Time is. It's the same description. No. 
Absolutely. But it's not like live streaming every night for two hours. They also don't, you don't see them eat the entire thing. Yeah, you do. No, but like. In this is one person pieces. preparing everything over the course of two hours and eating it as opposed to making something crazy and then having a group of people eat it. Well, okay. Nobody knows the other guys. They all know Harley. So <laughs> it's kind of like one person. But it means the same thing. I mean, it's like they just make ridiculous meals and sit down and eat them. I think all that food is going to Harley's beard. I would not be surprised. That thing is fucking massive. I bet his beard has a skeleton. At this point, it is like <laughs> you think like like a whole chicken skeleton. I don't know. Or? No, just like it's, its own like there. like endoskeleton. The beard itself it's like does. A big shot like it has capillaries. Yeah, like, gross. <laughs> you know, know, it does seem like 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 stage two. It must be beard. so uncomfortable. Like we were just with him in the desert. Yeah, that thing must you, have been uncomfortable. Hey, you should talk about okay. that. Yeah, we were out there for the. I actually went with you out to the rewind video uh, when you and Dan went out there to film to be part of that thing. That was a lot of fun. It was epic. And you guys were awesome in it. You guys were I, I was actually amazed at how much time they gave us in that video because a lot of people didn't. Well, I, know. I guess if you bring a, a high speed camera to a video, that you have to have a lot of screen you time. And you pay the pyro guy. <laughs> well, the direct. Oh, here's the clip from the uh, rewind I'm pretty video. Sure so you we're guys being had towed. We're being towed by the uh, RV from Breaking Bad, and then that's the tree falling over. They didn't yeah. use that take. Now, and before I jumped too early. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Before the sun went down, uh, the back part of that trailer, not the the rear of it, but like opposite from the camera angle, had we had there, they had like a shrub. Wall, a hedge wall set yeah. up so it looked just like Gavin's backyard in the UK. It was really cool. And I actually did a shot of it where I was talking to Gavin and it looks like he's in his backyard and I back up and we're <laughs> in the middle of the California desert. It was pretty funny. The, the first run they did, there's actually a shot in the, in the behind the scenes of this uh, Bowser just like dousing the whole desert with water. Because the first take we did just kicked up all of the dust from the desert. And they, oh, yeah. they, they were doing the thing in the car where they were following us in the car parallel. And they, they said they couldn't see us at all. Wow. It's just like all dust. How many takes did you have to do with that? Uh, probably like six, maybe. Six or seven. Oh, it's not bad. How long was the setup on that? Did they have to like reset the pyro every time? Uh, it actually wasn't too bad. It was like five minutes and go again. Oh, shit. Yeah. You somehow got it perfectly timed where you're doing that like awesome double kick in yeah. the air when the explosion's like We actually only had, I think, you. two, I think three or two or three goes with the explosion and the rest were without. Yeah, they, I remember they had six canisters and there was a big debate how many canisters to use. Yeah. And they decided to go with two, and that was more than enough. Also, this is the first time where I've not been running the Phantom. So, like, nobody there knew how to use the Phantom. So, not only was I in the shot, I was, like, running back and forth, like, setting up Wait, the camera. So I was, like, they I was rented a Phantom, a guy, and they didn't fucking have any, uh, no, an operator? No, we took our Phantom. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I just used it for a shoot in New York, so I flew straight to LA to do that. So, why not take it across the country? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, all right, do this. And then I was, like, telling him, like... like it's going to be really bright, but you don't want to, you want to expose somewhere in the middle, otherwise everything else will be dark. And it actually kind of was dark because it was towards the end of right. the day. But I think we judged the exposure pretty well. It was, it was perfect, like a yeah. nice silhouetted fireball. That whole last third of that video where Kasim G, I think it was on the motor yeah. bike, that when he kicks in, it's like, that's my favorite part of the video because yeah. it's you guys, it's him, it's Grace. But when they sent the email, it's like, all right, we want to have you, uh, you're on the back of a trailer and the trailer has like grass and like plants and it's like your garden and you're being towed by the Breaking Bad trailer and then there's an explosion. I was like, it's not going to happen. There's no, <laughs> this, this looks great on an email, but if this happens, uh, and then all of a sudden we're in the desert and I'm on the thing, it's like, oh, yeah. that play, they actually pulled this off. <laughs> yep, play. They don't really. Why did they get the Breaking YouTube. Bad RV? I don't know. It's, I guess it's just like a popular year for Breaking Bad. Did okay. they shoot any of Breaking Bad in LA? Or was it all in... Um, no, I believe it was all shot in New Mexico. New Mexico? Huh. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Because I was cool. going to say, they might have already had the RV there for shooting. Don't know. I don't think it's in New Mexico anymore. I think it's been moved to the lot in yeah, LA. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So Did they was auction? It? Was that part of the things? I think at the end of the show they. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think off. that's the actual Breaking Bad mm. RV. Okay. I think it's a, a very the same, close same model. Yeah. From what I heard, I think it was one that they did use, but it wasn't like the hero. The it hero wasn't a hero one. RV. Yeah. Well, you didn't remember the. Don't forget, <coughs> spoiler: as part of Breaking Bad, in one of the earlier seasons, they did destroy that RV. Yeah, but they didn't destroy the one they were shooting with. No. Okay. Is that? Oh, oh really? Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That, that happens a lot. Well, I did, I did say they destroyed it. He, he was just correcting me. So <laughs> I totally understand what you're saying. Is that for me? By the way, I want to point out that Woolworths no. has 200,000 employees. Are we still talking Australia. about <laughs> fucking I think Woolworths? It's to talk about I think it's a joke. Woolworth facts. You want to go visit the soda jerk? Jesus. It opened its right. first store in 1924. It was on Pitt Street in Sydney. 1924? Uh, I thought you said they were around since the 1800s. This is Woolworths, Australia, oh. where they oh. still operate to this day. <laughs> In 2013, they posted a profit of $2.26 billion. Wow. So why is it, why can they get their shit together forward. in Australia and nowhere else? Hey, we're having a quiet time. Yeah, we're having a quiet time? Quiet time. Yeah, uh, Bre uh, before we started the podcast, Gavin suggested we have a quiet podcast. Yeah, just like a nice So little. you could hear this? Oh, Don't yeah. do that. Why are you doing that? 
You're going to drive Paget crazy. We're going to fucking, cut, gonna fucking <laughs> cut your audio there. Because um, people love a quiet podcast. Why don't you just drink it out of the fucking can? It tastes weird not in the can. That's true. I, I know. It's, to me, it's this. It, <laughs> seeing it seeing Red Bull is weird. Like, it is completely not the color I expected it would be when I first saw it. You want it. it to be red? I don't know what I want it to be. Oh, yeah, I did. I guess I want it to be like cough syrup red. I thought up until about last week that Mountain Dew is green. Mountain Dew is green. It's yellow, apparently. <laughs> you just okay, you, so what do you mean apparently? I was you're going to get in that debate of whether something is yellow or green when it's yellowish green. And it's a never ending. People are just like the bottle's green, but the drink itself is not. The drink's green. It's just a different shade of green. It looks less green. It looks more yellow because the bottle is so green. Color blindness to me is interesting because on it is on interesting. A, on Battlefield, the game, there's an option for color blindness because the the main icon colors in Battlefield is like that shade of blue and then the orange for like different objectives. Right. If you switch on the color blind thing, they all become just like very slightly different shades of blue. And it's like that is more easy to differentiate for someone than blue and orange. That's weird to me. Hmm. I guess what? if you can't see red and green, maybe they stand out more. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess that's got to be it. <laughs> Otherwise, it would this, be a fucking I know useless. people are very appreciative of the fact, of the fact they have that mode in Battlefield. Yeah. I know yeah. a lot of people that's like, that's why they play Battlefield is because of that mode. Really? Does, hmm? does Call of Duty have a comparable Don't setting? Know. I played Call of Duty in 3D. That means nothing to this conversation, but there you go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I also one time played Goldeneye. <laughs> there you are. Let, let me read this thing. <laughs> I want to remind everyone this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. For our listeners, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One audiobook to consider is Mocking Jay, the final book of The Hunger Games. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash roosterteeth. That's audible.com slash roosterteeth. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. Great service. We talk about it all the time. You get a free book and you're stupid. You need to read a book. So go, <coughs> go get an audible you're book. You're stupid. You're stupid. You need to go read a book. Okay. This is going to bring up a point because you said Catching Fire, the second book in the Hunger Games series. I said Mockingjay, the final book. I'm sorry. But I'm okay. sorry. Uh-oh. I didn't mean to screw up your ad read, but you got me thinking about Catching Fire. Brought Catching, to you by Audible. Catching Fire is the one that's in theaters now. And it's actually, you wanted to bring up as being nominated for movie of the year. Yes. Terrible choice, by the way. Uh, you know, I know you. people love it. We talked about it last time when I talked about how it's a, a typical second movie where it's not a complete story unto itself, but it sets up another story, which is what happens with a lot of second movies and trilogies. You just saw Hobbit 2. Lots of people have seen Hobbit 2 without spoiling anything. Hobbit 2's got that in <coughs> spades, dude. I don't want to... People like The Hobbit, right? I don't want to talk bad about it. No, no. Actually, p- many people don't like The okay. Hobbit. Or the, yeah, in, especially in comparison to The Lord I watched of the it. I thought it was enjoyable. There you go. I'd give it probably a solid 6 out of 10. There were two things that just took me out of the moment in that movie, and that bugs the hell out of me. Okay. Oh, there's one, it if there's one scene. It's not uh, really spoiler. Are you going to get any spoilers at all? No. Nah. Okay, go ahead. There's one scene. Uh, barrels, right? There's barrels floating down the river. It's in the book. That's happening. It's all like, whoa, cool scene. Then it cuts to a GoPro. Right. There's GoPro footage in the hallway. You are not the only person I've heard complain about that. It's, it's mental. And it's, you can it's, tell it's a GoPro? Because I watched it in IMAX. It's like, oh, this all, it all looks so good. The movie looks amazing. And then it's just like, you know, that really crisp, high shutter speed GoPro look that everyone's used to. It's like, I was like, did they just use a GoPro? And then it cuts to it again. I'm like, that's a GoPro. Mm-hmm. And then it happens again later on in the movie with the, the dragon, where it does that really choppy high frame rate thing. And I, I'm not sure whether they were doing it for effect or actually whether it was just an error, but it looked weird. Really Can out. you spot a phantom when it shows up? I know, obviously, if it's super slow motion, chances are it's probably a phantom camera, but can you specifically spot a phantom camera? Yeah. I can spot reds, red one cameras mm-hmm. when, when they're being shot. I know, I know exactly what to look out for in phantom footage, and I can always see it. Really? And I know Is it the high frame rate? <laughs> they, use red on, uh, they use a red on a YouTube rewind video? I think I saw behind the scenes with the red. Uh, they use an epic, a red epic, which is the red one is the big one that we've had forever. It's the one we use over there. Right. I actually got footage of the guys. There's a high shot uh, in the rewind video where they're going over the top of Gavin's uh, RV. And that was a, like, uh, you probably have seen them at Brookstone. They have these base hovercrafts you control with an iPad. Uh, but this one had like eight props and it was. Big enough to like hoist an epic, which I think the rig Brandon could probably tell us. I think, or Kyle, you might be able to. What's the weight on a bare bones epic setup? And it even had that stabilization mount on it too. 
It was pr- it, this thing overall it's, was probably it's, this big. It's in the behind the scenes on that video. And they fly. Okay, yeah. they put that footage in. Yeah, you can yeah. see it. Yeah, did the show where oh, I f- flew right over my head? No. Yeah, there's they, a shot where it goes right over the top of me. The guy was fucking with me because he saw me filming it. Oh, it was. I don't think it was in our behind the scenes. I think it was in the official YouTube one. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. so we have some more footage of it that we can probably put up soon. Yeah. Because we we're okay to show that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I you haven't had of, to be cryptic about it. I have a ton of footage as well of Dan and I screwing around inside the RV as well. It's pretty funny. Tons of RT life footage. Or slow mo life footage. Slow mo life. <laughs> slow mo life. <laughs> All right, so I guess we should um, get to our uh, award nomination. Yeah, Woolworth still exists in the UK <laughs> as an online catalog. <sighs> Can I throw these flowers? Woolworth. All right. So y'all were great about getting me uh, movies and stuff. I say you. But I want to say when we talk about you, were talking about reading Mockingjay for Audible. That All was right. your suggestion. I I am always remiss to talk about like people on Twitter and how they aggravate me after the podcast. The big thing is when people talk to me in real time when they're watching it, oh, even though it's like three weeks right. after. I'm like, what are you, you're talking nonsensical. Like, no, Bernie, that's not right. I'm like, I didn't say anything. I'm just sitting at home playing Bengal. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this time around, people, I was talking about how trilogies that, when trilogies are made, there's this fascination with trilogies. And when the first story comes out, it's a complete story. And then when the second one comes out, it's because the first one was successful, so now there's three movies, so the second one always ends up being this incomplete story just to set up the third one. Mm-hmm. Even in really good one uh, stories like Empire Strikes Back, Hobbit 2, <laughs> which was one book when it started, but when they turned into a trilogy for movies, they did that. And I said that about Hunger Games, about Catching Fire is that way. And I, when I saw Catching Fire, it aggravated the shit out of me. And everyone wrote to me and said, Bernie, that's because the books are a trilogy. I'm like, how does that make a fucking difference at all? <laughs> and then a lot of people guys thought that I didn't know that Hunger Games were a book. <laughs> they were like... It applies to books too. It's like it when when you when you have a middle story, whether it's a movie or a book, it's it's an incomplete story and it's yeah. aggravating as shit. To See, me. I feel yeah, absolutely. I feel Catching Fire was a complete story in itself, but then there's that cliffhanger at the end, which that, sets it up. That means but it's not a complete story, in my opinion. I'm just I'm happy with the way the movie started and ended, but there's just I don't know. All I can say is there's something that happens at the end of Catching Fire. Yeah, there's a line where they say something to somebody. And it implies this other thing that's been going on. And I'm like, well, I want to see that movie. That movie sounds way more interesting than the movie that I just watched. Or the, I want to read that book. I mean, you're going to see the third movie now. You know, Ashley, you know what Ashley told me about the Catching Fire, Gus? Have what's you that? read the Hunger Games books? No, God, no. So, yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, but you probably should. I mean, you know, I know it's Didn't like... you just uh, recommend one young, on Audible? That's for the people. They're popular. People <laughs> like them. Young I'm team. still I'm still listening to Game of Thrones. There we go. I can't recommend Game of Thrones every fucking month, every time. I wonder, I wonder if I should look up if Audible has any, like, Cormac McCarthy, because that would they be do. really interesting to re- hear someone reading Cormac McCarthy. <laughs> they do. They have... Oh, um, <laughs> they have almost all of his books, I think. So, so, you get the code and get Catching Fire. Apparently, Catching Fire is written in first person... Present tense. How could you read an entire book like that? Like, I'm drawing my bow. I'm yeah. firing. It's like, I can't even like imagine how that would last for 300 pages. Are the other books not written in the same manner? I, I don't know. I haven't read any of them, but Ashley said The Catching Fire is written in first person so how do you present skip, tense. How do you skip ahead? Like, is it just gets to the point where it's just like, breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing this. I'll do it. Here I go. I'm doing it now. Like, well, how do you skip ahead? It'd be great to write stuff like, and then I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like a chapter of Z's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm falling asleep because it's present tense. It's so weird. I would, I would have, to, I've seen. I'd love to listen to that. I so. read books that have been in that same kind of tense. First person present yeah. tense sounds so weird to it's me. It's okay. It's surprisingly okay. It sounds weird when you like get Think the about concept it. of it. Achoo. Yeah. I just sneezed. <laughs> Bless me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank me. Um, cousin. So you talk about people like responding to you in real time for them. Uh, the other week uh, after the podcast, Esther was like, did you talk about me on the podcast tonight? I was like, no, I don't think so. She was like, people are saying you talked about like I skinned my knee. I was like, yeah, I did six weeks ago. Like people will, will send replies like. Did that oh, one just yeah. come out on YouTube? Or How's something? your knee? No. No, it had been it had been weeks. It had been over a month. I was like, I, I get so many more replies when the podcast goes on YouTube, I guess, because more people are like actually watching it. Like last week when I talked about peeing in the shower. My By Twitter the way, I'm talk. totally on your side. Thank you. So is Meg. She said the same thing. Yeah. Sorry, not to out Meg, but yeah, she's into peeing in the shower. No, I mean. Totally I, down with it. So pretty much everybody who gross. I saw talking about it does it and does not see a problem with it. People are animals. People are filthy. Out of everything you fucking do, peeing in the shower is what gets you. That's gross. It's I don't do sterile, gross things. first of all. It's, it's not sterile. I it's bullshit. Let me pee in your mouth. No. Wow. <laughs> if it's wow. fucking sterile. 
<laughs> Watch you by cool. <laughs> People are such fucking germaphobes nowadays, and it pisses me off. So the FDA is making... I'm with you, Barb. People are total germaphobes, and we got to get over that stuff because we're about to run out of antibiotics. Did you see that the FDA Gentry, is making people who make antibiotic soaps, they're making them clarify those statements and prove that soaps are actually antibacterial? Go ahead. Um, they, I guess there's a lot of products that claim to be antibacterial but really aren't. So now the FDA wants to set a standard for that and make sure that companies adhere to it and that products are properly labeled and marketed. Well, how about we just don't have that stuff? Yeah, I think. I th How about that? I, I think that shit's bad. I think that's overuse of antibiotics. I don't I, use any antibacterial soap that, at home. People have been ringing that bell for <clears throat> probably 20 years now. Stop abusing antibiotics and, and stop using them incorrectly. Well, so you're going to run out. Yeah, yeah. How? we're about to run well, out of antibiotics. Antibiotics are no longer effective against as effective as they used to be. Like, there's different classes of antibiotics. Like, the weaker stuff to the stronger stuff. Yeah. The weak stuff doesn't work for shit anymore. And is the that, strong is stuff strong kills people? everything. Yeah, and it's like, you, you only save the strong stuff for the worst things right now. Like, there, and now there's antibiotic-resistant strains of tuberculosis. Where it's like, you can't, there's no way to cure So does this. that get diluted amongst everyone, or is it just some people who are... No, it's the, 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 the bug, the, the, the virus itself. or the bacteria itself. Is it, now here's, immune here's, to in it. a nutshell, here's basically the way it works. There's in your body, you have an infection like 20 billion bacteria, an outrageous amount. You apply an antibiotic to it, and it kills m most of them, 99.99 percent of them. And the ones that survive are now genetically, if that applies to, I don't know if well, that no, applies they, it to. They, to, they to, so you you apply antibiotics. They gather a resistance to that, and then then when they remultiply. They now have a resistance to that particular. So it's like they're more likely to be resistant germs. to it, but then over time, they actually do become resistant to it. Right, because if you do this process several times over and over, then you weed out all the ones that are immune or so, that aren't immune to it. So if one person gives a cold or gives this thing to someone else and it keeps getting passed on, are they only getting the latest generation of that infection or bacteria? They're probably getting a mixture thereof. But the problem is that, like, let's say uh, you have a, a bug that you catch, I catch from you, and the way they treat it normally is with penicillin. Then it kills off all the bacteria in your body that are killable by penicillin, and everything it doesn't kill is all the stuff that's resistant to penicillin. So then that all builds back up in my body. When I pass it along, I'm more likely to pass along so nothing but bacteria. So every, every transfer, it's an evolution. It's, more, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution more so with the use of antibiotics, not with really transmitting from one person to the next. Okay. The, the, the transmission of one person to the next is how it kills us. So uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, you're given an antibiotics, like the doctor gives it to you and says, you know, take these for two weeks. Even if you feel fine after a few days, take it for the full two-week regimen. That's to kill as many of the uh, germs as possible. So that, walk, walk behind the camera. So that, because uh, if, you if you stop taking it too early, then a bunch of them live. You fear better. But there's a large uh, colony that are still alive that lived it. through the uh, through the antibiotics. Why the fuck did French fries just show up here? They're so good. Because the rice mongler bought them. Yeah. Rice mongler. Thanks, rice mongler. Yeah, thanks for the fries, dickhead. Here, pass them on. You want some? You, you did. Yeah. To me? Oh my god. Here, pass those guys. I didn't see shit. Open up. Fries are so good. You didn't peel and these listen. things. <laughs> I, obviously, I'm sure somebody who's a microbiologist thanks. will tell us a billion ways we got that wrong. That's the bird's eye view of antibiotic resistant <laughs> strains of bacteria. Why do, why do we... <laughs> I don't understand where these french fries came from still. <laughs> he tweeted us and Gavin so said, good. yeah, he wants some. Why are you giving so them good. both to me? So, yeah. You I know what I was wondering, too? Like, you discover food, like, somebody had to, like, cut up a potato and it, fry it. Most places, not. What do you mean? Is that really a potato? Yeah, it's really a potato. Okay. Isn't it? It's, it started as a potato. They might have mushed it together, okay. you know, to make a fry. But listen, McDonald's fries are good. I don't care anybody says. Yeah, they are. They're, they're the best fries. To they me. don't rot, though, do they? We just got an In-N-Out burger in Austin. Have you been? I, w I did. I went on Saturday. I, I had one been. for breakfast on the day it opened. They are very delicious. And people really like their fries a lot. I could, I could, eh, I could care less about their fries. No, I don't it, like their fries. It took me about five minutes. It was not crowded when I went. Oh, really? It was very crowded when I went. It was double line drive through that snaked like, back and forth through the parking lot. See, now I have nowhere special, though. That was like a good thing to do in California, wasn't it? We just ate it in and out. Yeah. yeah. The same day. Thank you, John Freisinger. Oh, that's good. This is a good one, Barb. All right. Let's go. Are we talking about these awards or what? Yeah, yeah. I think I had a feeling we were talking about something, and then we got off on the tangent of. Uh, we talked about uh, antibiotic antibiotics. Antibiotics. Uh, people are. We talked about peeing in the shower. Oh yeah, Team P. Yeah, right. I have something to say about this fucking germaphobe thing. Do you? Yeah. Go for it. And I forget if it was you who were platform. telling me this or Go someone ahead. else, but it's like. Which is funny. It was me. You plant seeds in the ground. You grow vegetables. This is me. Someone farms them. 
they like go through this entire process. They get to your house somehow. They put in the back of a cart. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a whole animated adventure about this. Yeah, it gets dragged through a warehouse. Yeah, they did make an RTA about it. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember Do you that watch Rishi stuff? No. It's pretty funny. It's only like a minute and a half. Take it easy. It was like it was like a year ago. <laughs> Are you going to really call out somebody else for repeating material, Gus? You and I do I it. get called out all the time for it. I'm going to call other people out, too. Only when Monty's on the podcast. I never call you out. No, you don't. Other people do. Who? Monty does. So you call Twitter. me out. <laughs> you know who you are. I yeah, I listen to like, birds. We're going to repeat stuff sometimes. It I don't know. That, that's a good example get to me. It. I guess that's why I remembered it so well. I'm sorry. I got you mad at you. You can get mad if you want to. Quiet time again. All right. <laughs> Nominations. So, Bernie, wh- uh, I guess let's start with uh, movie. Let's start with me because I'm not ready. You start with you. You're not ready. Gavin, hey. any nominations for movie of the year? Not different than last week, no. Not different than last I, week. I, no, we're narrowing down last week. Oh. Okay. I got to throw gravity in there. Yeah. Gravity's yeah. got to be... Yeah, right up there. And I, I'm going to put on the movie because I'm, I'm the only one here who's seen it so far, Wolf of Wall Street. When it comes out on December 25th, go see it at a midnight screening. That movie is absolutely incredible. Should we push the awards back a week? Nah. What do we care? Hmm. Whatever. Because what I really want to see that, too. I also want to see American, Have you seen Scorsese? American Hustle yet? I really want to see that one, too. No, I haven't because I'm sick of fucking people sending me pictures of American Hustle telling me I look like Bradley Cooper. So, thanks for that. Well, that's I don't a, see it. It's a step up from Zach Galifianakis. Have you seen Bradley Cooper in American Hustle? That's why they're sending it to me. Okay, then. Uh, hold on one second, Barb. I'll show it to you. Yeah, show it to me now so people don't fucking tweet it at I me. I would say Man of Steel, but I don't want to... That's not good enough. Over so and over. Really, that's my point. So I also had uh, 12 Years a Slave. I put uh, Catching Fire in the running. You put Catching Fire and This is the End. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you send it to me constantly. What about The World's End? The World's End. God, this again. That's the Simon Pegg one. Yeah. You want it on there? Sure. Okay. Fuck in. I thought it was okay. I mean, yeah, it's, no, it's too bad no, because all okay. the Simon Pegg movies... Oh, God, movies. dude, you just <laughs> made me put it on the fucking list. All those Simon no, no, Pegg movies, nothing compares to Shaun of the Dead, and it's it's tough. Can I put Shaun of the Dead on there? I'll still watch Shaun of the Dead when it's on, like, HBO or it's on TV. Totally. Like, it's, I'll, it's, I'll, it's such a great movie. Yeah, and it's, like, it's so hard when they have... Uh, that's For a lot of people, that's the first work they saw from that. It's the Space Group, right? Yeah. They're all the only one on made movies. But, uh... Yeah, that was the first thing I saw. There's an episode from of Space that's the same as Zombies. That's really? That's why they made the movie. I just didn't think anything lived up to I think Shaun of every the Dead. time I catch Shaun of the Dead on TV, it's always where they're breaking into the Winchester to make their last stand there. Oh, really? Like, no matter how many times I catch it, that's always where I jump into the movie. <laughs> or it's the scene where they go to get his mom and his stepfather... And he gets bit in the car. Yeah, it's it's one of those two. But well, then they're pretty. They're kind of close to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing I <laughs> we're talking about movies from years ago. The thing I really <laughs> thought about Shaun of the Dead is it was the first movie in a long time that did the Romero style zombies, where everything's like super slow. Yeah, and just like the constant, plotting. never ending. Just yeah, and I always like that a lot. How are you liking Dead Rising Three so far? Uh, good. Game. I haven't actually played it in like a week. But yeah, it's a good game. Ray oh. came up to me and said he started his grind. Hey, yeah, I saw him today. He was on 60, 62,000 zombies killed. I think. Oh, man, I am yeah. so happy. So I'm finally better at a game than Ray. Which one? Power Star Golf. Are you beating all this? <laughs> Every time <laughs> I play, like you can see all of your friends and like all of their records and stuff. And like I, 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 I love seeing when he has like a longest drive on a hole. I'm like, yeah, this <laughs> no, is going down. He's gonna go and be better than you at that game. After he's been hearing this. He's been trying. No, we, 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 we've had some trash talking back and forth already. Really? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were just like secretly. No, no, no. I just remembered a movie. What's that? Fast Six. Fast Six. <laughs> False. I, I really didn't understand what you said at first. You know, it's weird. You know, I, uh, I just think this category, we're talking about stuff, and we know it's going to be gravity. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to say, it's going to be gravity. You know it's, it's going to be It's either be gravity or 12 Years a Slave. I haven't seen it. I, I have, I, I'm, I'm making it a point. I have to see that before. Is it we in vote. theaters now? Or yes, it's in, it's in select theaters. I think you can watch it The Violet Crown here in Austin. Okay, good to know. I'll go. And I think The Violet Crown, The Arbor, and The... Uh, for some reason, the Cinemark XD screen up in Pflugerville, oh. I think, also has it. I would love to have the shit depressed out of me. You know what I found out? I, this was on... my. <laughs> you and I were talking about shit uh, out of me. Eli 5. Explain it like I'm 5 yeah. on Reddit. Is that a, its own subreddit? Yeah. I, and they, did they make that default that everyone no, subscribed so. to it? I think it just got popular. But then how does it... How do I, I see it? I only started now, noticing it like a couple... They now, must have added it to the default subscriptions. Hmm. Because I see it all the time, and I never subscribed to Eli 5. Is it? It might, a, it might get... Put up as best of Reddit. That's possible. It, has, it, may, it may be how it gets up there. Okay, that's possible. It's not um, Ask Reddit. It's not part of that. 
Okay. But to me, it's like it's like an offshoot of Today I Learned. And that is the the one subreddit that I get totally lost in Today I Learned. I get burned out on Today I Learned. Because they put stuff on the podcast. It's, and no, And it's also so much fucking stupid shit. Like, are you retarded? You just learned this now. I guess I didn't realize people are a lot younger than me. Yeah, like the sun is made of fire. Yeah. Like it's that. like <laughs> the earth is round and in space. It's like there is sometimes there's like such stupid drivel in there. <laughs> drivel. But I, I think it was on Today I Learned uh, that they posted statistics where – of like, I, I, I'm totally paraphrasing ballpark numbers here, but it was like, of a million slaves that were uh, essentially shipped to the New World, only like a tenth of them came to the U.S. And the rest of them were in South America. Hmm. Like, it was an extraordinarily small percentage of the overall slave population was in the U.S. Really? But it's something that's so heavily associated with America. Well... You know? How long did it continue to operate in other countries? Like maybe it stopped a long time before it stopped in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Like Woolworths. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Woolworths still exists in Australia, <laughs> just like slavery. <laughs> um, so okay, stupid. so to wrap up, movies, Catching Fire, <laughs> This is the End, Wolf of Wall Street, Gravity. You said Wolf again. Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> <laughs> Gravity, 12 Years a Slave, and Fast and Furious 6. We want to narrow it down to five, or what's our... One, two, three, four, five, six. Fuck it. Six is fine. Six? Okay. Hey. I'm not kidding. Wolf of Wall Street. Go see it. Wolf. Why you wolf? Wait, you didn't have a hobbit. Did you see the Wolf Among no. Us? Because no. I know you liked the Wolf Among Us. Uh, the Wolf Among Us you, is really good. You, yeah. Why don't you wolf these fries the down? Fucking, um, Walking Dead Season 2 uh, comes out tomorrow. The game? Yeah. Oh, snap. Sweet. Um, cool. I, 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 it's funny. I want to go back and play the first series, but I don't want to change the choices I had. Does that make sense? Like, I want to get a refresher on what happened, but I feel like I don't want to touch that save. I feel like I had to do that to get an achievement. Like, there was in the. All the achievements in the first season were, except 400 Days had one that you could have missed. All of them are story based. Could you not just play again? 400 under Days had two, actually. Yeah, one of them like was uh, evolved when they got you're walking down the road. I think in chapter three, and then the other one. Yeah, it was, was put something by the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, you have to, that's like, the one I missed, and I had to go back and do it. So it's like right at the beginning of the chapter. Yeah, when that's you in, find that's the, in four hundred days. When you find the kid in the in the Letterman jacket. It yeah, it depends on your choice. It was someone else for me. Oh, I see. Okay. Do you remember that video we filmed? I think it was us four, maybe, where we were trying to recreate the Walking Dead game. Last of Us. Last of Us. You're Last close, of Us. Yeah. We were trying to, the opening to Last of Us, yeah. which was in Austin. My bad. And you brought that up. Now it's going to get constantly asked about it. I actually saw that on someone's computer being edited the other day. Really? Yeah. I've learned to be very careful about stuff we talk about that we're about to start working on. Because if it gets bumped or pushed out a little bit, it's like there's some people in the audience, it's like that's what they want to see for sure next. And it's yeah. like, I feel like we're like, you know, well, with that, not it fulfilling was like, an obligation. If that got lost in the mix and there's you know, something we could do about it. but I just, you know what it was? Somebody cut it together and was like, eh. it was just okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have good ideas that when we actually make them, they're not that great. And then yeah. we don't put them out. And yeah. then people always wonder what happened to them. It happens. It happens. It's the same with everything. Like I've, I've shot so much stuff. Like, I, I put out like 50% of the stuff I shoot for Slow Guys. I just don't talk about the stuff that I didn't Only 50%? Out. Probably. Might even be less. Really? Yeah. I constantly send Gavin for? stuff to like, when I see something, like, this would be cool in slow-mo. And it's like, that, I don't even like say what it is. I just send him a picture or mm -hmm. I send him a YouTube clip or something like that. I do that all the time. It's like, and I can't. Do you ever get sick of that? Like, I feel like I, I have suggestions for you every now and then, but it's got to be shit you've thought of. Like, no, do, I mean, do you most, get sick of, people telling you most stuff? of it is stuff I've already seen or already shot, but I, like, I, I appreciate it. Okay. There's, there's sometimes I'm sure stuff I haven't seen. It's different if it's coming from you rather than like hey. floods of tweets and emails and stuff. Yeah. But if I have to hear about that trillion frame a second camera again, I'm going to blow my head off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think everyone has that. I think everyone has something when you're on the internet that's just like, they're relentless with you about it. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's not, it's not because they're hounding you. It's just, they see it and it's new to them and they bring it up, yeah, but it, that exciting. happens a bunch. There's, there's one that I have. You want to say what it is? Yeah. In hopes that maybe this will stop people from tweeting it at me. Oh, that will not work by the way. Whatever. But there is <laughs> this mental illness or disease. I forget. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's a W. Let me guess. It's a disease where people feel compelled to make puns. Puns and like inappropriate jokes. Okay. At hey, least, maybe you have that. At least once a day they go, Barb, I think I found what you have. And I'm like, ha ha. I don't, like, Wait, it's you're not, denying that you have it. Yeah, of course I don't have it. How do you, How know, do you know you don't have it? Because I'm not constantly compelled. I make them when I feel it's appropriate for the situation. Intervention? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> a, doc, a doctor's <laughs> office? Is this what I know this what you mean. It's like, it's, like it's like just like little drops of water. Like, like, like you see it like here, then again, then again, then again. 
Yeah. And then again, it's like, and it, keeps, it just keeps going. It's crazy. But and it's like, the- it'll pop up on like nine gag or something one day and then I'll get that picture a thousand times and it'll pop up on like funny.com and I'll get that picture a million funny. times. Is that a real website? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, what website I went to today that I haven't been to in forever? Break.com. Yeah. I love Break. I, I can't remember the last time I went to that website. It's been years. <laughs> You know, I have a video that made it to break.com. Really? And they paid me $500 for it. What was Did you it? post one of Gavin's? No, <laughs> this, is, this is when I was like 17 or 18. Did you yeah. piss for mud points? I filmed all of my friends <laughs> reacting to Two Girls, One Cup. Oh, really? Yep. And that is not a video that ever uh, <laughs> got anywhere else on the internet. It got taken down. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah, they're saying that Eli 5 is now default. Mm. It's a default subscription. Oh, cool. Um, what were we saying? Break.com. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Uh, Gavin and I were recently on, I don't know if it's aired yet, we were on Freddie Wong's podcast. Yeah. And Gavin talked about his videos being posted on Break.com back when it was called Big Boys. Big Boys. Big yeah. Boys was better. Someone else got paid 500 bucks for my video. I never saw that But money. you have to provide like proof that it's yours and everything when you get paid. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> well, apparently someone you've been seeing someone else's shit. That's not the most robust system <laughs> in the world. It's yeah. probably a checkbox saying, "Did you make this?" Yep. No, I had to send in like behind the scenes photos and everything and all this. Really? It's like, it's like the I made this. You made this? I made this. I made this. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this is my sweater. This is your sweater. This is my sweater. Um, here, let me read this thing here. Uh, you've probably tried hulu.com. Hulu Plus is so much more. With Hulu Plus, you can watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of hit TV shows and movies in the living room or on the go with your smartphone or tablet. With Hulu Plus, you can watch your favorite TV shows like SNL, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Shark Tank, and Scandal. Watch every episode of shows like Lost, Law & Order, SVU, Doctor Who, and Community. You can also check out exclusive content including Hulu originals like The Wrong Mans and Behind the Mask, Hulu's new docuseries that takes you inside the world of sports mascots. You'll also get access to a collection of ad-free movies and kids' content. For only $7.99 a month, catch up on current shows, binge on old favorites, or catch a great movie. Stream as many TV shows and movies as you want, wherever you want. Right now, you can try Hulu Plus, Hulu Plus free for two weeks when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's a special offer for our listeners. Make sure you use HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth so you get the extended free trial and they know we sent you. Go to HuluPlus. <laughs> dot com slash rooster teeth for your exte- right now for your extended free trial. I just watched American Psycho on uh, Hulu Plus last night. Cool. Was that the one with Christian Bale? Yeah. Did you ever read the book? Oh no. God. What if we could get read the? Uh, <laughs> we learned that Gavin uses audiobooks to read along with books. I did it once. What? I did it once. You said that was the purpose of audiobooks. You said that was the purpose. <laughs> I, no, honestly, I thought that's how people did it. I you did said that. you do it. You said that's what you use oh. audiobooks for to read along. What movie was it? I did it once because I was reading the American version of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and listening to the English audiobook, and I was just seeing the differences along the way. So here's here's sense. an idea I've got, Gus. He said favorite with a without the U. <laughs> <laughs> What's your idea? <laughs> and we could you could use both the codes for our sponsors this week to do it. You could queue up American Psycho, the movie with Christian Bale, and then. On audible.com, if it's available, or you can find another book. I'm that does checking this, right now. You can r- run the audiobook while you watch the movie and see how well it matches up. Have you read the book? Yeah, Brett Easton Ellis, right? Is that what? who it is? Are you saying it's a very, very faithful recreation of the book? No, I'm just saying it'd be an interesting experiment to try. See to, how well it matches up. To read along with the film? Nope. You turn the movie on, turn the sound <laughs> down, and then play the audio track, you play the book. Right. I'm sure the pacing is different. Probably. I would imagine the book goes a lot slower than an hour and a half. Yeah. American okay. Psycho, yep, unabridged, 10 hours, 12 minutes. Nope, that might be a little <laughs> off. Put it, like, Just play, put it like at 20%. It out. <laughs> stretch it out, then you got something to watch. While you, you know how you can to listen book? to podcasts at 1.5 speed now on you your could, iPhone? You can always oh, can do you? that. You can listen, well, I didn't know that until recently. But just do that with the book. How fucking busy are we that we don't have time to listen? I mean, that's like where we are as a society now. I don't have time well, to listen to stuff that I want, I want to listen to. If you're to. listening to an audiobook, sometimes the reader will really get into it and like, do all the, the accents, accents and the pacing. Or, you know, if an old woman's telling an, an old story, they'll take ages over it. You don't want to. Sometimes you just want to hear the yeah, words. Yeah, uh, in the Game of Thrones, they do that. Yeah. Whenever old Nan's old telling Nan. a story and he's he does like, the old Nan voice, it's like, oh my God. But Child, it, back in those. And it's like, oh God, <laughs> get but, on with it. But it's like he's acting it out. Yeah. Like he becomes that character. and He manages to do toothless very well. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if he has false teeth and pulls them out for some reason. He characters. does toothless really well and like, 
old congested man, like that phlegmy, yeah. like old man <laughs> voice. He does that one really well too. I bet he pulls out teeth for some things and then just like sloshes like custard down his throat for oh. other things. Oh, to get that. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> where'd you go with that? Yeah. Just to get that phlegmy sort of like. <laughs> it would be awesome to have performance art in audiobook narration or audiobook readers yeah. like doing that. Like I would love to have like <laughs> Catcher in the Rye read by like an angsty teen. Like, ugh. If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll probably want to know <laughs> is where I was born. You hear him flipping pages like, how many pages are left in this fucking book? <laughs> <laughs> but it is amazing. To, I just to, read the whole page. I don't remember anything. <laughs> He's going to get a hooker and then shoot himself with a gun. That's cool. <laughs> the, uh, the guy that does the Game of Thrones one, though, he has to do so many characters. And I think he got a Guinness World Record for doing it. But then I, I've realized when characters get injured and stuff, he has to do like an alternate version of that character. Yeah. So the, like an injured one. He's like, ah, oh. And it's like... He really has to do a lot of voices. He's really it. good at it. Um, yeah. And it, it, to the point where even if you, you, he doesn't preface it with like who's talking, with who's speaking, you still know which character it is because yeah. the voices are different Like there, there are some scenes that in the book in Game of Thrones where there's just two mysterious figures talking in a tunnel and it's like you can tell who they are because of the, his yeah. voice. Yeah. That just kind of gives it away. Do you think this guy comes up like he learns who the characters are first and then thinks of voices for each of them or do you think he's just reading through and then I don't know because he does change him sometimes a new character Hopper. comes up and he's just like I'm he, gonna talk like this he now he probably had him ready ahead of time because I think the audiobooks came out a little after because the, the first Game of Thrones book's really old at this point Okay, I think the audiobook came out uh, years afterwards but he does do that thing where now he'll the first two or three books or the first two books he's kind of faithful to keeping the characters sounding the same. Yeah. But then after a while, he start, in between books, he changes. Yeah. I guess because so there's such funny. a long gap between them. Forgotten. He forgets yeah, I, how he I does imagine them. he must have like character profiles, like age and physical appearance, and that he bases the voice on that I before guess he reads the first That's line. true. They are also aging. Yeah. And in some cases, they're in different places. Like they're not where they were previously. Okay. Why would Age. that change their voice? Uh, if they're in another land where people speak a different language. Oh. Gotcha. Like where? I don't know. Somewhere across the narrow sea. The narrow sea. <laughs> everything across the narrow sea in Game of Thrones seems perfectly fine to me. Like everyone over well, there. Because they don't give a crap about the, the throne, do they? right? They're like perfectly content. They got big cities, and everyone's happy. And it's it's. I, if I was Daenerys Targaryen, I'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna rule this place. <laughs> they already all love her, you know, over there. Yeah, but she. Yeah. I love Daenerys. I know she wants to come back and get the goddamn throne, just like everybody else. You get it. So the Mad King was her father, right? Yes. Yeah. Should we segue into television shows now that we're talking about Game of Thrones? Oh, yeah, let's go to television shows. Game of Thrones. What a great segue. Congratulations to Gravity. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> we're not picking winners yet. I'm being the most nominated. Uh, where are we? TV. <laughs> most nominated. What do you What do you got for TV? Game of Thrones. Breaking Bad. Game of Thrones. Breaking Bad. Fucking easy ones. It's like why Why bother what with you that? Got? Let me think about it. All right. I'll, what, I'll, TV? Read, I'll read. I have a list. Walking Dead. The first half of this season, whatever the fuck that is these days, it was was good. So you want to put Walking Dead on there? No. Yeah. Derek. What? Is that Ricky Gervais? Oh, right. God, I feel like nominating Orange is New Black, but it really did take me eight episodes to get into that show. You just nominated half of a season of another show. I did, did you know that my mom's cousin is the casting director on Orange is New Black? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or a producer. One of the two. <laughs> so. <laughs> I forget. Barbara had uh, Mad Men, and I, you know, I had some of these other ones you mentioned. I also had uh, put... Bob's Burgers and Key and Peel on there. Oh, and we had a uh, Hello Ladies. Do you want that week. on there? Yeah. This one guy Bob's was Burgers. giving me shit for nominating Bob's Burgers and not Archer. No, Archer's good because I mean they're both good shows and they're made by the same people. I just liked Bob's Burgers better. I think Bob's year. Burgers is way funnier. Yeah. We don't have know. a web series category, right? We so have I, internet, I can nominate a web video. series. I can name a web series for this, right? We call it TV show, but I guess we can change the category. This might as well be a TV show. This is it. Nominate. Fuck it. Bravest Warriors. Bravest Warriors. Bravest Ooh. Warriors was good, dude. Except that was really good. And they did with being Puppycat. Those same people set a record for the biggest Kickstarter of all time. No, they didn't. Yo, yeah. Not all of all time. Of yeah. web content. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we should have a category. There's no way they beat Star Citizen. No, Star Citizen is like 12 billion bucks at this point. What is, it, is it 40 million? 40? Uh, no, I think they did. Oh, well, I don't know. It could be. The last time I looked, I think it was 32. Have they started to hide the totals for that on the site? Mm -mm. Star, Star <laughs> Citizen is a game. They had a Kickstarter. And it did really well. And then they continued it after the Kickstarter period on the website. And it's just like continued. Like, I think uh, Ashley was saying, like, people always ask, why didn't you report about Star Citizen getting another million dollars? Because that's every day. It gets another million dollars. Yeah. And 
every week on the patch, we talk about Star Citizen. So <laughs> if you're interested in gaming news, check out our live stream on Wednesday or our audio release and video release on Thursday. And you're doing video game awards. Not for... yet. No, no, not yet. Okay. Yeah, soon. But that will be on the patch. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, all the video game awards will be moved over to the patch. Okay. Uh, so what do we have here? We need to narrow this category down. We have Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, uh, Bob's Burgers, Key and Peele, Walking Dead, Derek, Mad Men, Hello Ladies, Bravest Warriors. Get rid of Derek. Get rid of Derek. I would say. Get Why do you keep telling me to write shit down then immediately tell me to? Because I'm of listening it? to the other stuff and it's like you're right. We don't need Derek. I would say right. get rid of Mad Men. I don't Ooh, think this. Bernie, is you're not gonna stand up for it. I was gonna say, did you know that Woolworths won a responsible <laughs> retailer you know, award? In the UK, we called it Woolies. Did you? Yeah. That is an interesting fact. I'm gonna add that to my list. <laughs> Game of Thrones for me. Game of Thrones. Uh, I have Walking Dead on there. So we have Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Bob's Burgers, Key and Peele. Nobody saw Agents of Shield. No. Nobody saw like, Always Dead. Sunny was a good season this season. It was very good. Very um, I would take off Key and Peele. Yeah. I, I was know. on the fence about him. All I right. don't know if that would be as big. You know what's, like, you know what's tough shows. for me is that as much as I like Key and Peele, do you know the live crew girls have both been on Key and Peele? Are you serious? Uh-huh. Yep. Both. My, like back to oh, back week. My iPhone girls. just tried to autocorrect burgers to have an H in it. What language are you set to? Right? Burger? Burgers. <laughs> Burgers? <laughs> What have uh, you been doing? Here, I don't know. All right. Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Bob's Burgers, Walking Dead, Hello Ladies, Bravest Warriors. That's you know six. what? Here's, where's the area where we have deficits? Like, we don't have anybody in this whole goddamn company that watches Sons of Anarchy. Uh, Adam I, Baird. Adam Baird. And does. I keep hearing what a great show that is. Adam and Megan. Megan well, watch too. it, right? We're going to do something. Uh, I haven't told you yet, but I'm, I'm going to open up. We're we'll doing a little different this year. I'm going to open up the voting and let uh, other people here at Rich Teeth uh, kick in their opinions. Yeah, you told me that. You just told me that just now. Yeah. There you go. I just heard about it. That's what it be right. That's a good idea. So, Woolworths. I also just heard We had one in Eagle Pass. <laughs> what? We had a Woolworths in Eagle Pass. <laughs> no, listen, dude. That's. I'm taking it back. That's boring. I'm taking it back. Nobody gives a shit. All right. Take back the night. Internet videos. Uh, so, I got Samesies, Nigerian Cook Survives Shipwreck, Bat Dad, What Does the Fox Say, Bad Motherfucker, Man Seems Wife for the First Time, and Bound 2 slash Bound 3. What about Taylor Swift sings a goat? <laughs> that makes me laugh every time I see it. Yeah. Taylor Swift sings with goat. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll nominate a funny <laughs> video from something we eliminated from a TV show as a funny fucking video. I'm going to nominate Freddie W. and Key and Peele. What, I don't even know what the name of the video is. It was the one with the, <laughs> you dirty gun. <laughs> You're a dirty gun. I'm going to nominate that. I'll look it up right now. All right. Freddie w did, one, w did one of the funniest videos I've ever fucking seen I'll online. tell you what. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost Barbara. Barbara's gone. Bar- Barbara's gone. Usually, usually, I make Barbara, <laughs> usually I can make Barbara laugh ridiculously hard when, uh, when, we're, uh, when we're in the middle of a sponsor read. That's Are you usually, okay? Yeah, I'm okay. She's losing her shit. That really she, got me. She's losing her shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Mexican Standoff, featuring Key and Peele. It was a great video. Uh, it's really funny. Uh, Mexican. <laughs> Fuck. And in case you're interested, the, but the Live Proof Girls reference, Milana is in the Sexy Vampires sketch, which is online, and I don't see it. What Stevie, about Steven? Steven is in, <laughs> I don't see it on here, but there's some kind of Kung Fu sketch, and she's in that one. Hmm. But I don't see it online, unfortunately. So... Uh, Milana is clearly better. <laughs> Dems fighting words. Man. All right, any other videos you want to add in there <clears throat> before we start eliminating? I feel like there should be better ones from this year. Like those don't like. Well, we can't nominate our own videos. We talked about this. Oh, Vine maybe that's why. By the way, I can't shoot any more vines with these fuckers because they are one of the three of us is out of town every single Friday. Tomorrow. That's, that's normally we shoot them. I can't do it tomorrow. We're talking about the week before Christmas. Yeah, Everyone's this busy. week. I'm talking about the week before Christmas. We haven't shot vines in like four weeks. Oh. It's I, been you mostly. I'm going to call you out. I can't believe you all I aren't calling him out for this. Us. I'm here every day. 75% of the time, it's you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're complaining that you can't shoot vines because you're never in the office. You don't know me. Also, we shoot like four videos. Not my real dad. It takes time, six right? seconds so of that's, time. Yeah, that's 24 seconds of time. Please, fuck you. It takes six <laughs> seconds. There's also a shirt coming out potentially next week. Oh, we got to shoot vines for that then. That we got to shoot vines for. Which God, I don't think we'll th- get to. I will, I'm embarrassed to admit the vine where Barb was shirtless. That took <laughs> way too long. Like, Gavin and I felt legitimately bad about how many takes we had to do. And we were doing a thing where, where <laughs> oh my God. wherever you changed and, like, got into your bra, we would turn away. And that was like, I was like why we are going to see you in the bra. Why are you turning away? <laughs> no, it's funny is if you look at the audience retention graph on YouTube for that video, it's like... <laughs> hey, guys, we already talked about this on the podcast. Oh, shit. I got called fucking out. Bam. Drop it. 
No, it's literally like the normal no, curve. No, Barbara. We already talked about that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> There's got to be some classic videos from this year that we're forgetting about. Oh, well, I've been emailing you for like two weeks now about it. You haven't replied to a single fucking one. I reply to emails sometimes. <laughs> Listen, this is the hardest category. Every year I tell myself I'm going to pay more <laughs> attention to the videos that come out. Keep a record of the really funny ones. But that's a year's worth Ka of work. Kara like says one... Gangnam Style. That was last year. <laughs> last year. Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> that was Julie. That, that, that was, was the, Rewind for last the year. Last I want to nominate Dancing Baby. I think that was a <laughs> big hit this year. What about um, awesome. Rebecca Black Saturday? No, shut up. No? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, no music videos. I wish music videos would get off of YouTube. I don't We like have two it. music videos oh. on here. YouTube should spin off the music to a different well, platform. Well, I feel like a lot of that's... Handled by like the Vivo umbrella. Yeah, it's totally different. It's totally different. Like, I, uh, 1.5 billion people didn't watch Gangnam Style. No, 1.8 billion. Whatever, whatever it's now. I'm sure it's like two by the time people watch this. You know, it's just it's repeat views. I mean, music videos get a ton of repeat views. Do yeah. I sound bitter? I'm bitter. No, I hate the fact that fucking music well, videos get so many views. Also, uh, PewDiePie made a really good video. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> you didn't like it. No, didn't I was waiting like for it? the sarcasm to kick in. He didn't at all. God. Well, uh, Odds Are by the Bare Naked Ladies, I think, is we a great that. music video. <laughs> you should watch it again and again. Yeah. God, we're missing something. There's a really funny video that I'm just can't cover. All right, here, look, I'm, I'll take the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you well, you, what? You've had the opportunity to I think about this the Twitter for two see fucking weeks. anyone else can recommend. For this. How long does it take to think of something? Hashtag is uh, an hashtag RT Podcast. A fucking instant, dude. All right, I'm going to start eliminating shit. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to eliminate Bad Motherfucker. I don't have any problems with that. Just because I feel Anybody like... Anybody want Harlem Shake? Get out. <laughs> nope. Was that this year? When I said... Yeah. Somebody said... When you said Mexican standoff, my Xbox tried to turn off. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican standoff. That yes. Like, <laughs> that's, you guys are terrible. You should never do the yes bit. Uh, what else are we going to take off? Mm, uh, all, uh, all these are pretty good. The, some of them are weird in that they're not like intended to be internet videos like the nigerian cook survives shipwreck i feel weird having it on this list even though that's how it got distributed I think it's like it's a really cool story i don't know if i would call it video of the year though. right like it's cool and it's an interesting thing that happened but in terms of actual like i know i know what gavin's missing that you would want to nominate for video of the year will sasso lemons Fair. oh, oh yeah. Yeah. i don't yeah, know yeah. if anything lemon compilation that. yeah Gavin yeah, would definitely want to See, nominate things. Thank you to uh, look up who told me that. Somebody whose ID I just took. Congratulations. Oh, it's Lady Kit Katie on Twitter. I'll retweet that because I don't want to have to spell the name. There we go. Uh, all right, I'm a good call, Lady Kit Katie. Tell you what. Da, da, da. Back in the uh, quiet. Okay, so what do we got portion? for best video of the internet of the year? I've um, got Keen Peel. Samesies. Samesies was so good. Nigerian cook survives shipwreck. Bat dad. Uh, what does the fox say? Nope. I mean, that just has get rid of that. That has thing. to be on there, though. Don't like, let your prejudice against music videos influence you. It, that was like has a you, have you watched? Let me ask you a question. No, honestly, have you watched that the whole way through? Yes. Really? Yes. I personally You're don't part find of the problem. it funny. What? I never found it funny. Well, so then I'd... don't nominate it. No, but it was such a huge video. I mean, even the oh, rewind. what a bunch of horseshit that is! You're nominating on behalf of other people's opinions. Yeah. Yes. I understand. I recognize the fact that it was a big video I know video people who can't year. have a console that can be constantly connected to the internet. <laughs> uh, Mansi's Wife for the first time. Bound 2 and Bound 3. Taylor Swift Sings with a Goat. Mexican Standoff, which is a Freddie W. Keen Peel. And Will Sasso Lemons. Yeah. All right. We're going to go with that. We have a chat, chat roulette wrecking ball, dude. I, I, I removed you it. I felt like okay. these other ones were better. Yeah. yeah. When was the Cool Me Maybe one? Was that the year before? That was last year. Yeah. 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 All right. That's it. Cool. All right. So I'll uh, kick it around. Are you going to make a journal with all these that uh, people could... Uh, I'll make a journal, I guess, yeah. And uh, people can comment if they want, but they can't vote. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll leave it to Rushi's people to, uh, to vote. Cool. And give the input. And I may or may not count their votes. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Depending Th on... This yeah. is how a real award show works. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody fucking knows. Do we still have Freddie W's award? From yeah. like Yeah, so we got to make sure he doesn't win, right? Because he won't he won't, he won't won the He award. was even <laughs> in the office and picked it up and was looking at it and didn't take it with him. He's like, how am I supposed to take this home? That's how high quality they are. Yeah. <laughs> it was too delicate, too precious. I don't blame him. That thing's, that thing's fucking crazy. We don't make them anymore. We should do that thing that people got upset about uh, where 
we let, we will license people the image to use on their website. <laughs> like they can pay us like a thousand dollars and we'll let them use the best of twenty thirteen podcast. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We should do that. That's a smart idea. Yeah. Genius. So people really got upset about that when Notch said that about whoever it was. Was it PC Magazine or someone? Remember that story from like a couple months ago? He said they won a best of and then uh, they were going to offer to let him license the, like that award image back for like $1,000 or something. And people misinterpreted that as they thought the award was for sale and that he had to pay $1,000 that he would win game of the year or whatever. What? Oh, people are dumb. Yeah, it's like, no, it's just a licensing fee for use of the image in promotional materials. <laughs> People don't know what they're talking about. No. Especially here on this podcast. I think yeah. we get called out more. The strongest seal of approval in the tech world, PCMag.com, considered the JD power of tech, is the world's largest tech publisher. Here are the 13 awards you won. 2013 best awards. You pay $500 per award logo. <laughs> Editor's Choice Award, $500 per award logo. Highly rated award, five hundred dollars per award logo. Well, don't you have to pay to get an Oscar or something? Wow! Like you do have to pay for your trophies. Yeah. Oh, really? At most, at most award ceremonies, yes, you do have to pay for your trophies. Yeah, the the guy I worked with. How much is an Oscar? uh, Like four, five hundred bucks. Yeah, the the guy I I worked with who got the Emmy that he didn't know about was it was four hundred dollars for him to get the trophy. Not many people know that. Yeah, and a lot of times we work on co-productions. Like Gauntlet just won an award for the first season of Gauntlet. Congratulations, Amazing. by the Thank way. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> we, we, there's a co-production with Blip, and so it's one trophy, so we had to pay to get another trophy made to send to them in their offices. We also got nominated for some new awards for IWTV. For IWTVs, yeah. We got a, like every time we've won an award, we've typically, um, I know for every time we've won an award for Red vs. Blue, we always have a duplicate trophy made and we send it to Microsoft, to either Bungie or to 343, depending on, you know, what That's year nice. that oh, was. That, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, well, that way you don't fight over it, you know, so it's a smart <laughs> idea. But that's uh that's crazy to me that license that you know that b- actually bugs me in that regard for it's like this unstated just accepted thing is that we remember we found out that the Twitter verified icon is paid yeah well that's not just, directly no it is it's 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 now like you can read articles about it and oh, the crazy really? thing was there was this run through like the video game industry where they unverified people like oh, they unverified right. some people uh, that work at Xbox they unverified the frag dolls which was an account. That Twitter was recommending you follow when you signed up if you were interested in the gaming. Category. They have like over two million followers, right? Yeah. Well, that's what because that they mean? were they were always recommended. But what does that mean? What does that mean to be unverified? Like you're not now. You're not who you were. Yeah, it totally destroys what the actual name of it is. Right. Verified is this is that person. Proven, this is who they yeah. say they are. And now they're just taking that away from. Now them. they're like, just not verified. This may anymore. not be the frag well, dolls after all. I always right. see that question they're with the Rooster Teeth Twitter. So that was our verification. People process. always ask why we're not verified. It's like for that reason only. Do they? Yeah, that's pretty I, much it. For the we, yeah, I, have really? to I get tons of tweets about why we're not verified. Uh, it makes more sense for a, a company than a person, in my opinion. Yeah, Fragdolls, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Fragdolls have 1.3 million followers, and they are not a verified account. But they were. They were. And they were a recommended account for a long time. Wow. There was a big rash where they went through a bunch of video game uh, accounts, like people in the video game industry, and just unverified them. I find that baffling. It's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like actionable to me, it's that that... Is Twitter saying now that's insulting. you were verified, now you're not who you say you are? That's kind of what that says if you take yeah, it Yeah, someone that. else could be the real account holder. Right, or it's like to unverify someone is an actual specific action. To not, to like if you have, there's an account out there like PewDiePie, your favorite guy, and his account's not verified. They just didn't verify it. But if it was verified and they take it away, that's a direct action of saying this account isn't who it says it is. So what happens we're like— We're removing verification. Let's say someone else makes like a fake Frag Dolls account, like Frag underscore Dolls or whatever. Got it. And they pay to get that verified, but they're not the real Frag Dolls. I don't think it would work like that. No? I don't think it would work like that. I think that. you have to pay and have verification? Yeah. I think it would work so in the dumb. sense that... It's just like break.com. Yeah. I think it, it should work in the <laughs> sense that, you know, uh, it's just a way for... Twi- honestly, Twitter needs ways to... There's a little verified... Yeah. You gotta have something. Yeah. There's a verified tick on YouTube now, but I'm wondering if... Does everyone what does that, that mean, a verified tick on YouTube? We're verified on YouTube. We're on the videos, though. I mean, isn't that a big way to tell? Like, if we comment on someone else's video, like when we commented on the uh, Rewind video. Oh, is that in response to, like, that you could fake accounts for a long yeah, time? I think so, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, Probably. that makes sense. Um, shit, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm verified on the Rooster.com account. Just so, so I've been thinking about, like, you say that it's a way for um, Twitter to, to have income. I get mad every time I look at their stock price and think about how this is a company that has never made a fucking dime. And they're worth, you know... Hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, they make money through advertising. No, they don't. <laughs> they uh, don't make any money. They, they, 
they have revenue, but they don't make any profit. Oh, that's what I meant. They, yeah. they get revenue. Twitter files for $1 billion IPO, but still isn't profitable. This is from October 3rd, 2013, TheVerge.com. Twitter has filed paperwork with the SEC to become a public company, which will allow outside investors to buy and trade stock in the company in the coming months. They have people. That's money. So here we go. During the first six months of 2013, the company pulled in $253 million in revenue, but its net loss increased by 41%. So what are they spending? So $69 million. Dollars. Where, where's the money going? So they, 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 they brought they have, in 20, two, the quarter of a billion, $253 million, and they spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $320 million. They have in they're, that same amount they're, of time. on what? To, to, I spent $320 million a quarter. They, they probably they have to spend Six it on months. people, on office space, on servers. Web developers. So they're, today their stock closed at $56.61. It's down 4% today. Uh, their market cap is thirty is, oh, is almost $31 billion. Really? What market capitalization. They were that. speculating, and when they filed for the IPO, this article speculates they could be worth as much as $15 billion. And here they are at $30 billion. Yeah, well, the IPO, I think they, their IPO was at 26, so well, that makes sense, yeah. That's uh, so here's much what they money. spend their money on. It says here that more than 500 million tweets a day flow through the service. That is a lot of connections. Yeah. You have to admit, that's, that's high volume. And uh, Twitter Ray does not. For like half of those. Yeah, Ray's got half of them. Um, Taco Bell, 420, <laughs> blaze it. <laughs> I, just, I, just, like, I just did half of his tweets for him. <laughs> Try to figure out. Don't forget reblogging something from Tumblr too. Oh, oh yeah, that was weird. So right. no, yeah. So it, it it's really upsetting to me that a company that cannot make money is worth so much fucking money. Yeah. It's like why are you why are you giving them money and people keep investing in it. Uh, it's like this is a company with no discernible way to turn that around into uh, into profits. That's about six thousand tweets a second. Are they posting. just hoping someone's going to buy them for a lot of that money? Sound right. It seems low. I don't know. Like. I don't get it. It's one of those business models where they... Well, if they're IPO, like that's, they, that's one of the end games. They're following like that, that model where it's like users first, monetization later. It's like, yeah, we'll just get a bunch of people using our stuff, and then we'll figure out how to make money later. It's like, come on, guys. Shit, man. Well, it works, though, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's almost like a crime. It's almost like a scam where people start a company to do this, pump up the stock value, get a bunch of money for it, then f say, fuck it, and then just like walk away from the company. Rich well, and then it shit. just collapses on itself. Yeah, and then just let it collapse. Like, who gives a Not fuck? at all. Not at all. What they're doing is they're building an audience, and they're bringing an audience in. There's an age-old saying, which is, if you're not being sold something, you're what's being sold. Uh, and that's what's going on. So they build up the big audience, and then they hand it over to somebody uh, you know, via an acquisition who can actually handle an audience, who they can't do the audience building part, but they can service an audience with advertisements and things like that. Typically like a big media company, you know, we so normally associate with like a television network or an old like, like newspaper print Fox company. Fox buying MySpace. There you go, exactly. Yeah, and it's like, then, then those people can make it work because they understand how to serve. They can do big ad buys with like Coke that there's just, Coke's just like, I don't know what Twitter is. Fuck it, we're advertising, you know, $80 million a day in all these different places. We don't have time to figure this out. But then once it becomes part of like Fox or something like that, then they can do it. Then they run it into the ground and or it goes away uh, two years later. There you go. Or it's like Twitter and it does hit all the right moments, gets all the right peaks and makes it through to an IPO and is successful. And that's an end game there too. It has been sold, Barbara. It's, well, how, been, sold, it's been sold to the public now. That's who acquired Twitter. I don't understand. How yeah. is an IPO an end game? Like, I mean, I, people love like making their, their companies go public. It's like a big deal. People love it. What the fuck does that do? I mean, like now your finances are under even more scrutiny and you're, now you have tons of shareholders who are pressuring you even more than before to turn your, your product to be uh, profitable or marketable. Well, you're also talking about a company as though it's one continuous entity. I mean, those are usually generations of executives. Like, yeah. I mean, the people who started it in day one uh, typically might not be there for three to five years. You know, they get it going. Then a different group of people gets it up to like a mid-range you know, decent privately invested company, and then somebody else gets it to the IPO. But they all maintain shares along the way, yeah. you know, and driving that up. And so then they all cash out when it, when it goes to IPO. Or they just hold on to it and they invest in the company that they help build and, you know, they have tons of money in Twitter stock. Hmm. What was the stock of Woolworths, do you think? <laughs> so stock of Wool Woolworths closed. Let me find out. What was their ticker symbol? Was it Wool? <laughs> was it W O O L? So. No, there's probably another W in there. There's a place in town. Alan just sent me this earlier today. Uh, there's a bar down at 7th and Brazos called CU29. Okay. They sell uh, something that I'd never seen before. It's bourbon infused with Franklin's barbecue. What? 
It's specifically Franklin's. It's specifically Franklin's barbecue. There's a picture of it there where you're putting it oh on the screen. Oh my god. Oh. Is there actually bits of meat in it? I don't know if the there's drink. meat in that it. That would kind of gross me out, I think. It looks like there's chunks of meat in the drink. Yeah. It, sa- it, uh, it says that, where is it? They're infusing six liter batches with two pounds of moist for over a month before they freeze it. Remove the fat and strain it into what is the happiest jug in the world. CU29. <laughs> yeah. So wh- when are we getting some? We, are we going absolutely after the have to do a remote <laughs> podcast from that place. 100%. And drink Franklin infused bourbon. Sounds awesome. It sounds like the best idea Can't ever. Can we actually awesome. though? I don't know. I know you're saying that as a joke. but Al- Alan is asking them. Okay. <laughs> I just okay. want to point out that Woolworths closed today trading at $32.65 Australia. What? Down 0.03%. Against a volume of 863,000 shares. Woolworths. <laughs> Stock tickers. Are you talking about that yet? W-O-W. <laughs> W-O-W? Yep. Wow. wow. Yeah, there it is. Uh, wh- I can't believe I was going to look. I was actually about to look up what their ticker was in the U.S. By the way, that's the stupidest thing ever. What does infused mean? It means you spill Dipped. whiskey on it, basically, right? <laughs> I mean, it... it there's no infusing process. <laughs> Do you think the first ever infusion was a guy going, yup. Yeah, exactly right. Infused. It's some, dude, it's some dude at the bar taking his rag that he wiped off the bar and <laughs> then going into a cup. Do you it's think like, he was drunk and he, infused with bar. he was trying to say <laughs> confused, but he was drunk and he said infused? No. I nope. was so infused, nope. man. <laughs> I don't think so at all. <laughs> I like Barbara's method acting. Can we see that again, Barbara? Can we see that again? I was so <laughs> infused. Yeah, I can buy it. I totally buy it. She said too much infused. How can I hold all these infusions? Yeah, like people do ape shit. We're done. We're past the bacon phase at this point, right? Like bacon. Remember when everybody just like bacon, bacon, bacon oh. and cupcakes. It was and just like bacon was like the thing. And you think we're past that? I think. I gotta hope we are, because like the bacon infused vodka. That's what that reminded we'll me. We'll never of. be past that. Well, you're in. You're Canadian. Do you even like bacon? Like, I love bacon. Do you call what do you call American bacon? Bacon. And Canadian bacon is ham. Oh, you you don't you don't <laughs> differentiate between what? the two. Canadian bacon is back bacon. Canadian bacon is back bacon. No, Canadian bacon is ham. Or it's ham. I had the biggest argument we the other day with John Reisinger because in one of the Minecraft videos, I named my pig Gammon. He was upset about this. And he spelled it G-A-M-I-N. Like Gammon. And I was like, you don't know how to spell Gammon. And he was like, what's Gammon? Never heard of it either. <laughs> and the Gammon steak is like what you call ham steak. Right. But for me, ham is just like thinly sliced sandwich meat. What's Gammon? Ham so steak. it's like a ham steak? Yeah. Like, you know the cartoon with the bone the with the ham thing? on it? You cut that, that's gammon. Yeah. G-A-M-M-O-N? So when, when you crazy assholes was t- talking about having ham for Christmas, I was like, that sounds rubbish. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was just like deli sandwiches? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what did, you, what did you have for Christmas dinner? We had salami. And then I asked everyone in Achievement Hunter, I was like, gammon, you get it, right? Gammon, the, the pig. And everyone was like, nah, we just thought you were making up a word. I was like, I've How never can heard you that possibly before? be upset that people think you're making up a word? Because some of them are real and people don't believe me. Because you make up words all the time. <laughs> Fair. You're the boy who cried munge. <laughs> 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 My favorite phrase is still frothing at the gash. There you go. That's not me, though. That was uh, in between us. Oh, dang. Yeah. thought it was you. What? Frothing at the gash. Okay. Dude, I had, I had a Blu-ray do something that I've never seen before. Froth What's at that? the gash? I w- didn't froth at the gash. I watched The Fast and the Furious on Blu-ray the okay. other day and put the disc in. Go ahead. It played a tribute to Paul Walker. Oh, yeah. They can do that. Oh, yeah, it's up- awesome. You mean I'm, updated dynamic? Yeah. It's just like the first thing it plays is like... How? It's, it's cool. I think that's How a really cool thing. How does it do that? Like uh, Blu-ray players, uh, as a standard, have to have a network port, so they have to be ready to be able to receive data <gasps> from the internet. Uh, wow. So they can change the trailers that play... Before a movie, in this case, there's That's also like cool. there's also on some menus you'll see a little thing come down from the top right, and it'll say now out on Blu-ray. It's like that's uh, what they. I just I just didn't realize that every single Fast and Furious Blu-ray that you now put in will play that tribute if it's been connected to the internet. That's fucking. It's pretty. Cool. It's pretty cool. The future. The, there, but that being said, I feel like now that they have that feature, they feel like they have to put trailers before they start playing your movie. Like the other day, I was rewatching my Winner's Bone Blu-ray, and I put it in, and it was like trailer skip. Trailer, skip. You can just press trailer, top menu skip. and it goes to the menu. But I wanted to see how many there were. Six minutes and 48 seconds of trailers wow. before the movie even started. That doesn't count production company slates or titles or anything. Wow. Six minutes and 48 seconds of just fucking trailers. And they know nobody's going to watch that. It's like that is the most worthless thing in the world. Yeah. How are you feeling about next-gen load times? I'm not too thrilled about it. 
oh, dude, I put an SSD drive in my PC at home. I should have done that years ago. Yeah. Oh, they're, really, they're incredible. It's really awesome. Yeah. A hard drive can't come close. Not even close. Not even close. I, it makes me wish that... Oh, uh, IGN did a story where they filled up... This is probably a patch topic. IGN filled up an Xbox One hard drive to see how big it was. Yeah, they said 500, 500 gigs. gigs. No, no, it's not. Well, I mean, it's someone else OS, right? The one oh, right, drive. Yeah. It's not. No, it's. I think it's like 380. It's like no, iPhone. 300. IGN's first 500 gig Xbox One hard drive full at 362 gigs. Wow. So the, the OS is, is big. It's big, or maybe there's something like it reserves for every game. It could potentially reserve. Right, it probably something. needs a cache that's reserved. Too well. much stuff on the Xbox One is abstracted. I'll, I'll wait for the patch to talk about it. But. They, they, they've talked about potentially in a future patch adding in uh, more functionality to allow you to see like hard drive space, what's utilized, what's not used, how big everything really is. Yeah, they tried to right now it. it's like they tried to just hide the stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You know what? All I care about. You know what I want to see in a patch, Ryan. <laughs> so dreamy. <laughs> Ryan is Mr. Popular to the patch. I, I finally saw the oh, first really? complaint oh, about him. Oh my god, are you kidding me? What? what I finally saw someone be? was like, why is Ryan on on like every episode of the patch now? Like, because he's fucking awesome. But yeah. that wasn't even a complaint, it was just a question. It was a complaint. It was a complaint. Okay. Everything on the internet, if people type it out, it's a complaint. <laughs> I mean, isn't it? I mean, it's basically dumb jokes and complaints. That's all the time. It wasn't a cat, so I figure it's a complaint. <laughs> Even if it's a compliment, you can read it like, oh, I really like it. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> that comes out. You just have a really whiny voice attached to it. Or it's like, it can become a, like, a complaint by default. <laughs> it's like someone could say like, oh, I really felt like this and this didn't work this way and I was kind of disappointed in this. And then someone will follow up immediately with, yeah, lol, retards. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then you're lumped in with this guy and you're like, that could be one of the worst things on the internet is people who agree with you. That can be awful yeah. of like when you're talking about it, like a, a topic and go and somebody else will come in and agree with you and then add their own thing. You're like, so stay away, worse. dude. I don't need Shut your up. help. I don't want you joining in on this. Yep. Yeah, that can be really that's frightening. That's happened to us a couple times. What's that? Just, that's happened to us a couple times. When we're trying to defend ourselves and people who are helping us don't help. Oh, yeah. Whenever like especially when like you ever get like, you know, whatever qualifies like a freedom of speech type issue, you know, or like anything offensive. Like, well, this is the way we approach and all this stuff. And then the people, yeah, who jump to your aid, you're like, just please. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean freedom of speech for you. <laughs> I'm not with them. I don't know these people. Yeah. yeah. That can be uh, that can be one of the toughest things for sure. Yeah. Um, so we had that, uh, what was it, that video with uh, the Amazon shipping drones the yeah. other that came out last week. You know that little drone that like bounces around with the box on it? Yeah, spider drone. It's real. It's right over there. Like, I thought it was a computer-generated element. Oh, no. I, I thought they would in. buy that and use it. How what kind of world do we live in care about where it, you target. are actually freaked out that something's real as what? opposed to not being... Just the way the box moved on it. It didn't seem like it was real to me. Oh, really? It seemed like, like the way it was, like, flopping back and forth. Like, there's no way a box would have really done that. You know, I realized about that short is that after Blaine got hired... Congratulations, by the way. He was naked in a short. When he I wasn't first... hired when he was naked in the short. I just want to point that out. True. Not sexual harassment. But it was his first short he was in technically as an employee. That is correct. First short I was in as a technical employee was a series short where I'm in the shower naked. That's true. That is true. So uh, if you want to get hired at Rooster Teeth, just take your pants off. That, <laughs> good it advice. is a good formula. It doesn't It hurt. does work very well. <laughs> I did a game time with Blaine. I thought it was fun. I actually had a... Blaine did, time. Blaine time. We had a, uh, had a whole... Um, do we use the green screen anymore? Can Blaine even, Blaine's working, right? He can't come Yeah, out Blaine's working. Um, but game time, we talked to people that work at the company, and I had a whole schedule built up, but then I had to like bump it back because like Blaine was hired. I thought, it'd be really interesting to do a game time with somebody who just literally started working at the company. Like, do the opposite of everything else, where it's like, you know, doesn't he, have a bunch of stuff he worked on. People don't know him at all. And then do him well, again he, in five years. Yeah, see, see, yeah that's He was an intern for quite a while, though. No, I know. I, I know that. Well, you, I mean, you meet people slowly over time, but we have interns that never ended up working here, it's you true. know, because they didn't take off their pants. <laughs> and where are you now? So when they filmed that, it was pretty cold. And uh, I asked Blaine about it. I was like, so was it cold the day you had your, your new delivery scene? He was like, it was like 30 degrees outside. Yeah. Oh my God. So was his knob out? He was wearing... No, nah, don't ruin the magic. Okay, I won't spoil it. Cock sock. Totally. He was wearing his dick. He was out completely. Joel, I was on that shoot because I was like the little girl in the background. And I was staying because we had like coffee and food there. So I was going to eat before I left. And Joel's like, hanging around, huh? Hanging around for this scene? And I'm like, shut up. Like, I'm just eating. <laughs> That's why Joel was cast at that part. <laughs> <laughs> he was he hanging around for the shit. scene. Was yeah. his butthole out? You know what I realized too? Joel's... <laughs> <laughs> I was talking. With, I was talking with Matt about it. that. I I was. I had just seen the Amazon drone video, and I thought of the thing we had already made our store video for the year, 
So I like, basically pinged everybody. And I also made sure to ping uh, Yvonne and Emily who run the store. And I said, <laughs> what do you guys think about this idea? And Yvonne and Emily, we should do it. <laughs> you know, do it. And uh, everybody was on board with it. And then I wrote that on the plane. Like I thought of it while taking off, got Wi-Fi, pitched the idea to them. People said yes. And then I wrote it on the plane and then sent it to them. Before landed, like just pounded out five pages. You didn't film it up there as well, you pussy. I know, right? <laughs> it's, just cra- it's so crazy the world we live in now. Like while I'm being like transported from one state to another. I think that's also how long until Sky Mall is actually a mall, <laughs> right? And you stop and you buy I, your shit. I think that's the fastest we've ever. I say we. I mean, you've written something and it became a short. Mm. Like Ninja that Gus. was that was Ninja Gus. Our early shorts were were more. Ninja like, I mean, like a fully produced. You know, you know what's really, you know what's really like crazy about that? I think that's like, I was talking with Matt about it. That might be the first thing I've written in like, I was like a year because I took some time off from writing. And like that thing might be, we were trying to think like, what was the last thing that I wrote? Vines. The vines. The vi- the, that is true. The vines. Yeah, you the write vines. every single vine. I try not to. I ask you guys every time. <laughs> every time we sit down with Barbara and, and Gab and I go, okay, guys, we got to do some more vines. We've got any ideas. And you both go, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> I hear every single I time. have ideas. Well, I, just, I, I fucking know. email for s- suggestions for the nominations for tonight. I don't get shit. I'm working. What? I see email at work and I'm working at work. There's no time for email. I'm working. I'm working. Work. I'm working. I'm this working is work. work. I don't have time Believe to Believe it or work. not, could, that email was work. Could I be, this is work. This is work. So could I be email? Do you want me to start doing emails now? Yeah, all right. Or am I working <laughs> and I can't email, guys? Touche. <laughs> Whatever, okay, you're you rendering. Got, you got dressed. Hey, I'm rendering. Ask me questions, guys. I hadn't made a journal in a while. I thought I should do it. It was a good Thank idea. you for doing that. that Plus, he, he was actually, in a lot of ways, too, he was doing a couple of different things there because he was also product testing the website and bitching endlessly about the comment system in the Rushi.com forums and comment threads. Oh. Yeah, I was having issues replying. Yeah. I Did Ben wait. fix that for you? No. We got to fix that. I uh, every time I would, uh, I'd reply to one and I couldn't post again for like a minute. So I'd be like, oh, you still no. have control? That's weird. And, then it, and you can't tell when the minute's up. The only way to do it is to type in a comment. And if it just deletes it, it's like, oh, I guess I wasn't ready. I have to yeah. type it all again. Sucks. I'm really excited for the new site. Yeah, we're it's, we're it's working there. on testing it and getting it. I don't want to hype process. it too much. No, but it, I'm really looking forward to it. I really like it. And I, I mean, it's, it's, it's really the first truly fundamental overhaul of that website in close to a decade. Yeah. You know, the website's. Oh, shut un- the fuck up. Close to a decade. Nine years. Can I round nine years up to a decade? If it's you, no, it should be thirty years, right? Because those nine years held what well, since the is it PHP the first annual to, uh, decade? Cool. <laughs> since <laughs> uh, since our first community website, nine years ago, not a decade. Fuck you if you think it's a decade. It was only nine years ago. It's not nine. By the years. time it's nine years since we made the social community site. Yes, what? October of two thousand four. All right, that's, that's when fair. I joined. That's fair. That's you want to go to toilet I'm, paper rolls so and suck on it? I think you're wrong in other ways. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. No, you're right. Wow. You know, I, by so the way, our first after the podcast change. with the cardboard tubes, I got so many messages from people I know personally that were like, hey, a, a toilet paper tube is not as big as I thought it was, which is their way of saying I have a big thick dick, and I don't want those fucking texts from any of you people. It was like a third of the way down. It was like, it was all it made it. It's that. Maybe a quarter. <laughs> so, nice. so you you get home, you get a, an empty ball girl. Do you say to Esther? I'm, I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. Don't bother me. <laughs> and I can, Until it doesn't fit, and then you're like, check this out. But the thing is... <laughs> The thing is, your <laughs> your bathroom door is like it is attached to the living room, yeah. and it's a really thin door. So she must have just been able to hear you go in there and just go, huh? I guess, hmm. and then come out just like, <laughs> did you like the weird thing to pee for or Gus anything? is that if you think about it, Gavin, his skin tone matches the color of cardboard, <laughs> so it's kind of like an extension. If you think about it, from now on, Gus is going to take all of the tissue part <laughs> from a toilet paper and just shove it on his knob. What do you think happened when uh, Vitaly tried to do that? Like a super. <laughs> you be nice. You be nice. You be a horrible person. You. No, it's on the internet. <laughs> it's on so, the internet forever. So, how many people uh, tried that? Tried that, and then are like, it was way too big, and they're like, oh yeah, two people, paper, two people, two people, two people in this room did it and messaged me about it. I know, Barbara. No, you, you <laughs> fucking too. I didn't do it. You sent me a picture. What? Yeah. What about? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did, what did you were you send me the picture? No. What picture? Oh. Why would he send Who the you fuck sent you a picture with... then? <laughs> Someone sent me a picture. Of, what? of a cardboard toilet roll on was... their dick? No, they sent, me, they sent me a picture of a cardboard tube and it was split down the side. And they were very happy with themselves. How did did they like, hulk out of it? Yeah, I don't know what they did. 
They just they probably just tore it and then sent a picture. That's what they did. <laughs> Cut probably it perfectly else. down the seam. I'm glad I could be of assistance to provide you guys with that <laughs> measurement metric. So someone's asking. Yes, Gavin did buy the gold iPhone. I bought the iPhone of pimps. I now have a functional you camera You don't get again. to... Look, it's very popular. I understand. You don't get to say everything that's gold is of pimps. I do. But did, that, you in, did you invent the Tower of Pimps? No, I didn't. There no, you I go. Didn't. And it's quite a That should have a black bottom. You should put a black bottom on that. I will. I'll actually... I what would, qualifies for something to be of pimps? Uh, like, is that thing behind you... Is that the split circle, into five, of, circle of pimps no, behind you? It should be ideally split into five segments. The bottom one's black. No, the, the line of pimps here. I'm pretty Gavin. sure. Oh yeah, that is a tower of pimps right behind him. Two of them. Where? Right there behind you. The dividing lines of pimps behind by the curtains of pimps. <laughs> <laughs> right by the beer bottle. Of right, pimps. you can see right above Barbara's hair of pimps. Hair of pimps. <laughs> Look, I'm even wearing a black shirt. Yeah, perfect. Look, I'm I'm a Barbara's tower. hair is more of pimps than that phone is. The question is, would the tower of pimps fit inside a cardboard tube? <laughs> would it? Hey, when are you going to get a tower of pimps built uh, for like your front yard? Uh, hey, Jack's you should really absolutely handy. totally do that. I don't have a front yard. What do you mean? My, my, at home? Yeah, you have a front yard. No, your front yard at work. No, I'm talking about your front yard at home. You have a front yard. No, I don't. It's not his personally. Well, what, 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 you want to put one at Jeff's house? Sure. <laughs> but that, that, yeah, that would be weird for Jeff to have a tower of pimps at his house. What a weird, what a weird connection that would be. How would you explain it to him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the only when, you're renting, <laughs> when you're renting a place in someone else's place, you don't just start putting when giant When you're renting, sculpture. you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'll put one on the roof then. I like that. You gave him permission to fuck up Jeff's house. <laughs> yeah, but, just yeah, but then the guy outside your window in the middle of the night is not going to like that. I wouldn't want people knowing where I live, though, when they see it. I'd just put it in your front yard, which is actually, I guess, technically a backyard, but it's your, your place, your courtyard. Oh, like in front of your little mini house in the back there? Yeah, I could do it. No, I'm sorry I suggested it. Never mind. Congratulations on you, your goddamn phone. All right. Well, really we're like at time. It. I'm actually jealous that I don't have one of those phones. You should get one. You're the only one in this country, yeah, doesn't Yeah, you were talking nope. about that before. I, I, listen, I break my phones on a fairly regular basis, like once every year and a half. I break my phones. You have Apple Perfect Care, time. right? No, I don't know. Do I? I They'll probably do. your phone if you break it. That's not an excuse. Well, then I get a new phone. That's how I get my new phone. It's like I finally broke my phone. And if I... If hey, I can, I, can I see your phone? Do you want me to, like, up. trip you when we no, leave? No, I'm fine. I'm, my phone is perfectly fine. I'm happy with my Are phone. You, uh, <laughs> okay, on that note, we're out of here. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll be back on Wednesday with the patch, and then next Monday with another episode of RT Podcast. I'll reply to some emails. Bye, I love you. Especially Visit you. Woolworths.com. Send me your suggestions. For- this podcast is brought to you by Octopus.com. Podcast. Podcast. Get mouth fucked by an